The officers' names in this episode have been changed for the safety of their identity. Thank you for understanding. July 18th. There's a strange story coming out of the U.S. Army base at the Presidio in San Francisco, California, over the sighting of a human-like creature walking on all fours with pointed ears and fangs. According to Officer Cadet Patrick McClellan, he was walking back to his quarters around 2.30 a.m., and he heard some strange sounds coming from the nearby forest. He stated that he looked over and saw what appeared to be a naked man with glowing eyes hunched over right by the edge of the trees. But it wasn't until the same humanoid creature began walking on all fours that McClellan realized something was not right about the situation. This was no man, he realized. McClellan said that the creature jumped over a five-foot fence with ease before disappearing into the forest. He went on to describe it as being about six feet tall, pointy ears, and long fangs protruding from its mouth. This story might have ended there, if not for two more reports of the same humanoid creature being sighted around the same area. A few hours later, a McClellan's fellow officers told a very similar story of a strange figure crossing the road right in front of their vehicles. This is where it gets interesting, as that particular road was open to only army personnel. So, this means something from outside the base had somehow gotten in the forest. Another officer told a strikingly similar story about seeing this werewolf-like figure walking on all fours and jumping over a locked gate to get past it. While we can't be sure of what exactly these individuals saw, there really is no other explanation than something very strange was roaming around the Presidio that night. Officer Cadet McClellan says he doesn't want to speculate about what this creature was, but does admit it would be hard for somebody in the area to have an exotic pet without anybody knowing, since it's so vast and remote with many places for animals or people to hide. Whatever was out there is unfortunately no longer around, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. Hopefully somebody gets a good look at this thing the next time it decides to make an appearance. Nineteen eighty seven. August first, Officer Torgan responded to a call of a possible drunk driver. When he arrived on location, a white male in his early twenties took off running from the officer. The sighting occurred at around one AM along Highway forty four near Ellingston, Missouri. The deputy requested backup, began to search the area, but could not locate any footprints or tire tracks that may have possibly been left behind by the fleeting suspect. He said, This is one of the strangest things I have ever put in a report. He returned to his patrol vehicle, when suddenly, he heard what he describes as a high-pitched humming sound. The next thing the officer knew, in front of him stood a large humanoid creature with an extremely fit and strong build. Its eyes were a deep, piercing black, similar to a pupil-less appearance of a shark. The creature's arms hung down, giving it a very ape-like appearance. While its head was humanoid in shape, the nose was pushed flat up against the face with a heavy blow of fall during its lifetime. It had a very wide mouth, filled with lots of tiny razor-sharp teeth. Long strands of stringy hair hung from the back of its head midway down to its back. The officer noted that it appeared as if this humanoid had been living in the woods because... The humanoid's skin was dirty, matted, and also gray in color. It stood about eight feet tall and had very wide shoulders, maybe twice the width of a human shoulder. The witness stated that he was so frightened at the sight before him, he didn't even think to pursue it. He simply got back into his patrol car, returned to his station to fill out the report, which he never intended to release, at least publicly. The witness described this creature as one of the strangest things he's ever put in his report. He stated that when this thing stood before him, it looked like something right out of a horror movie. I know for certain that I saw something very unusual on the night of July 26th while driving home from work. I had not been drinking and was completely sober. 
I also do not drink caffeine or take any type of stimulant or depressing drugs. When my wife saw the tracks, she believed that they were left by a bear at first, but was informed that there were no bears in the area. In our front yard, we have a large maple tree whose branches hang very low to the ground. The object that I saw at the window was most definitely not a bear. It was standing on two legs, very unlike how a bear stands, and it reached with its arms in an attempt to touch me. It was only about five feet away from the window when we both saw each other, making full eye contact. It was frightening. I do not know for sure what I saw, and my wife is just as certain that she saw it also. I have never seen any type of creature that resembled this thing before in my life, and hope to never see one again. Obviously, Officer Torgan here isn't alone, as I just shared my own personal experience. There are things out there that defy the world we live in. Maybe shows like X-Files and Twilight Zone had it right. Nineteen seventy three, Officer Lamech reported a terrifying sighting of what he believes to be the legendary Mothman. His sighting occurred on Highway fifty one. Suddenly, in front of him, right above a slow moving car, was the figure of a man with his wings folded in across his back. The wings appeared to be leathery in texture, like a bat's, and were even pointed on the ends. A sort of sting protruded from the creature's belt line. Officer Lamech stopped his car and tried to get out when he saw the creature taking off flight at an incredible speed. The officer described it as follows. It stood between six and seven feet tall, had a wingspan over 14 feet wide from tip to tip, and large glowing red eyes. It flew at an angle towards the east. It made no noise other than a whooshing sound like air through its wings. It had claws on its feet, and something on its back, looking like two cylinders. Officer Lamech reported his sighting to the local PD, where he was laughed at, ridiculed, and finally forced into early retirement for psychological reasons. The officer was told that if he reported another sighting of this kind, he would be brought up on charges of mental instability. It's interesting to note that Lamech is extremely well respected within the community. He's an upstanding member of society, with no history of family or personal mental illness or alcoholism. He is very much a regular guy with a wife and kids. This has been one hard creature to research due to the reluctance of people involved in the case that are willing to talk about it. We immediately went and checked the area where he think we initially came across something which was just a short distance away. The road in which he saw it circles around comes back up on the top of itself in an oval-like shape with gravel roads going out in different areas of the farm. We were not able to find anything, but even my son said he thinks he saw something by one of those houses. It's no longer there, but maybe even a garden plot that had been abandoned long ago. The land has been farmed for probably decades now, before being converted into pasture land. The entire sighting lasted approximately three seconds, from him seeing it while driving until fully gone, since the sight was airborne. From his recollection, it was extremely large, stood right next to a tree. He saw eyes shine, and the eyes were large, as well with what appeared to be claws on its feet. The creature had long hair or fur all over it. Most of him was covered by something that he said appeared like a cape, or wings even, covering most of its body length. He could not tell if they were webbed, but they were definitely something attached to it, which we may have thought. He is 100% positive he saw this, and is actually very shaken up about it, since he clearly has no explanation for it. His car stopped working immediately after the sighting, so we believe there is some sort of electrical interference occurring at the time. He believes it stood about seven foot tall, dark in color, wings folded across its back, and extended like a stingray. His car stopped working after it took off into the air at an angle towards the eastern direction. But due to the electrical interference with his radio, which was turned off at the time of the sighting, which is also noted with other Mothman encounters, we were not able to find any evidence of anything, but we both believe he saw something and would like to help 
finding what he saw. Two thousand eight, San Antonio, Texas. A police officer was driving alone on patrol one night when he heard a loud thumping sound coming from the back of his squad car. He stopped, got out to investigate, and then suddenly had an unexpected encounter with a creature that resembled both man and beast. The bizarre encounter left him frightened and shaken. This is what he claims to have experienced. I was on patrol in a new district that I was not familiar with. It was around 2.20 a.m. I had just finished checking several convenience stores when I heard a loud thumping sound coming from the back of my vehicle. I immediately pulled over to investigate. As I got out of the car, something large began to run through the woods across the street towards me from behind. I thought it was a person for a quick second, but as it got closer, I realized it wasn't. And whatever this thing was, it was actually running on all fours. I couldn't believe what I saw. The being was hairy and had the body of a man, but the head of a wolf. It also appeared at first to be in some sort of costume or uniform, but I realized that was just how hairy it was. It stopped moving about 30 feet in front of me and stared me down, sizing me up. I was so frightened I couldn't move. I laid on my car horn for several minutes, hoping somebody would come to my aid, but nobody did. This thing began to charge at me, so I drove off. I didn't feel comfortable sharing this with anybody. Most people wouldn't have believed me or thought I was crazy. But now that so many sightings are being reported all over the world, I decided it was time to share what happened to me and hope that other officers feel comfortable coming forward. Two thousand one, the Navajo Reservation. A mysterious sighting of a humanoid figure which is similar to the famous Mothman. According to this Navajo witness, his name was Jerry Garcia. He had been on duty with his partner when they saw a white human like standing on top of a mesa rock near Shiprock, New Mexico. The flashing light revealed a skull shaped head and glowing eyes that were very large. The jaw was covered in long white hairs. The humanoid figure stood 8 feet tall and had a wingspan of almost 12 feet after it ascended into the sky. It took about three steps, flapped its wings once, and flew off over the horizon at over 80 miles per hour. So what is this? Is this another Mothman-related sighting, or something different? The Navajo are no doubt one of the most famous tribes in U.S. history. Could their land be home to many unknown terrifying creatures? that reside in not just forests, but also remote lands. Please leave your thoughts below this case. Alleged secret government facility in Hawaii being used to train psychic special operations units. 1991. A former employee from an alleged secret government facility in Hawaii has gone on record to describe what has been going on there for years now. A classified unit that deploys psychic warriors trained in remote viewing into other realities and timelines where humans have apparently never existed before. These claims come from William Edgar, an alleged former employee who says he went to the facility in the late 80s to work there. He claims that all military personnel are trained in psychic warfare. They can be deployed into other timelines and universes using clairvoyance and precognition abilities to accomplish their missionary goals. According to this whistleblower, the U.S. government has found a way for classified military units to travel interdimensionally by tricking biophysical bodies into having an out-of-body experience while leaving their physical body behind. The secret government is doing this in order to harness the power of time and space by accessing these other universes that exist in what scientists call the same space but not the same time. When an individual is said to have left their body, they are believed to be in a state known as the biophysical phase. According to conspiracy theory lore, once you leave your physical form behind, you can walk through walls and even fly. You can even travel into different timelines or parallel universes where everything is possible, especially traveling back in a time before human civilization was created on Earth. 
Mr. Edgar claims that people are being recruited from our top universities all across America. Many students showing great potential for having psychic abilities due to their age. These recruits are put through rigorous training programs to hone in their abilities before being sent on field missions. Edgar was killed shortly after releasing this information from a fatal car accident in 1993. The Hawaiian government and United States government have quickly responded and dismissed all claims as ridiculous and absurd. In 1985, a bad storm had just passed through Burlington County when Officer A.J. Quinn spotted something hovering over Route 130, which runs between Burlington and Bordentown. On June 20th, at approximately 6.40 p.m., I was traveling on Route 563, south of Chatsworth, near the Franklin Parker Reserve Speedwell entrance. I was looking to see what the parking situation there was for future hikes, so my eyes were on the right side of the road when out of the periphery, I saw what I thought was a groundhog on the left. At least, it looked like it. It was very large. I realized it would have had to been huge for one to be like that. So the size I saw was roughly four feet tall, standing on two legs. It reminded me physically of a groundhog. I did not get a good look at the face, and I almost continued to decide to turn around about 150 yards up on a dirt road to the right. I pulled in, turned around, and headed back to that location. There is a bend in the road there. It bends around to the right and on the way back, as I made it past the bend. Approximately 30 yards in front of me, the creature was still there. It was now fully turned towards me. I could see that it looked like a cross between Curious George and the character Chaka from the Land of the Lost. Its face and hands as well as the tops of its feet were hairless and light tan in color. The fur it was covered with was golden brown, a little darker than a golden retriever, very much like the color of a groundhog. I could not see the nose. When I locked eyes with it, I could see just the whites. I stood there for a second or two when I rounded the bend and then took off past back into the swampy area. It ducked behind a short bush. When I drove past it, I can no longer see it. I turned the car around yet again, and when I went by a second time, it was gone. I waited there a bit to see if I could see anything moving in the field. I couldn't, so I considered it done and took off. It was a couple of days before I shared the experience with my family and friends. In that period of time, I thought for sure somebody was going to report a missing kid in a Halloween costume. When the thing took off running, it was fast. I would describe it as the fastest kid on the 10-12 baseball team. We had really bad storms that night, and my commute was a disaster. It poured all through that area, and I thought it was odd that the thing I saw appeared to be dry. At least its fur was, which would lead me to believe it was under some sort of covering or underground. Of course, there are always skeptics out there suggesting... This type of ferocious cryptid is just some innocent child dressed up in a puffy Halloween costume on Hallow's Eve. But why would it be out there, of all places? Or maybe Officer A.J. Quinn simply mistook an actual groundhog for something bipedal. Unfortunately, for those skeptics and doubters, A.J. Quinn is a legitimate officer who was on duty at the time of the sighting and has never been known to mislead. Over the years... There have been reports of other sightings in this area of Bordentown, New Jersey, where the creature is said to dwell. Still, others suggest that terrifying entities as the winged humanoid and red eyes are merely overactive imaginations that produce nothing more than tall tales and fictitious stories about little green men from Mars or aggressive Bigfoot-like creatures with pointy ears and glowing eyes. Crazy UFO accounts and outlandish conspiracy theories aside, Officer A.J. Quinn's frightening account of his eyewitness experience in Bordentown, New Jersey is simply evidence that he and other witnesses did truly see something unusual and terrifying. A police officer was critically injured after being attacked by a large and powerful unknown creature. The attack took place one night in an abandoned building on the outskirts of town. 
a close friend and colleague of the victim, describes what he witnessed that night. I was there with him. We were searching the building for a suspect, when all of a sudden, something came rushing out of the one of the rooms. It knocked me off my feet when I got back up. He was being attacked by this monster. He was much stronger than anything I have seen. He was able to throw Jeff ten feet in the air with ease. I pulled out my firearm, firing it several times, but it wouldn't budge an inch. Like the bullets didn't even bother it. I don't know what happened after that. I blacked out for several moments. When I came to, the creature had already disappeared and Jeff was unconscious, badly injured and bleeding, with a head injury and broken ribs. The victim describes how he was seeing his partner pointing his firearm at an unknown creature. Jeff felt his gun jam when he looked up. The unknown being seemed to disappear in front of him. Jeff went to check on his partner and found him not breathing. The victim was able to regain consciousness, but quickly collapsed again shortly thereafter. Police officers were immediately dispatched to the scene. They took both men to a nearby hospital for treatment. Both sustained serious injuries and were unable to work for several months during the recovery period. Nineteen eighty. A Navajo officer says he encountered a white skeletal creature on the Navajo Indian Reservation in Arizona. The officer and two others said they encountered the thing one night as they were patrolling the desert near Shiprock. I thought it was a bear or some other kind of animal, said Joe Bailey, now an investigator for the tribe's division of public safety. It looked like something with high cheekbones and deep set in eyes. It had shorter arms, but its front legs were short. Bailey says he didn't realize it wasn't an animal until he got out of his patrol car to investigate, noticed and heard the footfalls echoing off to either side. He also noticed that there were no tracks. Bailey says the creature was nearly seven feet. The other two witnesses, who requested anonymity, also said the animal was hairless and had carroty red eyes. Bailey said it was the ugliest thing I've ever seen. He added that he felt a sensation akin to pins and needles when he looked at it. It disappeared before reaching a telephone booth. Bailey claims that he contacted Navajo Tribal Police Chief Samuel Pete about his experience after reading newspaper accounts of sightings in northeastern Arizona, right near the Navajo Mountain. This is where others have reported seeing a giant man with white skin that leaves no tracks or scent behind. The report also went on to include a local scientist's theory that the animal was potentially a genetic aberration, resulting from nuclear experiments in nearby Area 51, or quite possibly a descendant of species of bear known to have been in the area thousands of years ago. A few days before Bailey's alleged encounter, two other Navajo officers had reported seeing a huge hairless dog that stood up about five feet tall. This is in the same vicinity on July 4th. One Leland Joe saw an unidentified five-foot-tall being with white skin and glowing green eyes running across a field, again leaving no tracks. Also, a retired military man said he saw another creature one night. His car suddenly stopped mid-drive for no apparent reason, suffering from electronic issues. He turned off the ignition, turned on the lights to find that he was surrounded by several of these beings. These beings reportedly had glowing green eyes and fang-like teeth. They surrounded his car. He screamed and they appeared to just disintegrate into the air. As soon as they did, his entire car shot on again and he was able to successfully drive away. We're not exactly sure what we're dealing with, but there is something definitely supernatural lingering in the state of Arizona. 2012. A police officer from the area I live in was patrolling Route 563 two weeks ago and saw a seven-foot-tall, goblin-like creature standing right next to a tree around 1.45 in the morning. He pulled over and the thing took off running. He chased it for almost a mile before it disappeared into the thin air. It was vomit green color, with short horns on top of its head and large red eyes. That eye shine was activated by car headlights. 
The officer said that he could see the eyes and they were definitely red. The officer also says that it appeared to have a short tail, very muscular arms and legs, like a runner or a wrestler, and had a very reptilian-like appearance, even though it was most certainly bipedal. There was another officer who had a similar sighting back in 1989. He says that he was traveling at about 2 in the morning, and he saw what he estimated to be a 6-foot tall, a green reptilian creature standing next to the road. He slowed down to get a closer look at it before running off. I'm not sure what to make of all this, if anything, but I felt compelled to share my story. It could be connected to others out there who've had similar experiences. The area in Franklin Park is not far from Route 563, and it's deep in the woods where nobody really goes anymore, unless they know somebody who lives back there. It didn't surprise me. I've heard several stories over the years about people seeing things like Bigfoots, Sasquatches. Back when I was in high school, I had my own sighting of something like this, so things like that didn't really bother me too much. I consider myself to have thick skin. My friends and I saw two hairy, black, tall figures crossing the road. They were much taller than an average human, only they weren't apes, nor were they completely human either. It was hard to make out exactly what they were due to the moonlight being behind them and shining in our eyes so much we couldn't see the exact detail, but their size was considerable, at minimum seven feet. Do you have any insight to what these creatures are? Is there more than one? Can you tell me if they are somehow related to the Chupacabra or other known cryptids that exist? Thank you for all your work. At approximately 7.04 p.m., Officer Linda Seabrook was driving home from work on the Garden State Parkway when she saw a human-like creature that can only be described as gargoyle-like, having dark reddish skin and scaly reptilian wings. Officer Seabrook stated her disbelief in fact that such things even existed, but remains adamant of what she had seen. Officer Scott Kimball had a sighting of a gargoyle reptilian on Route 33 near Union at approximately 4.35 a.m. Police officer Scott Kimball was making his usual patrol rounds on Route 33 near the town of Union when he happened to see what could only be described as a gargoyle. The creature stood nearly six foot tall, scaly, wings protruding from its back. Its face had the general shape of a human, but with larger than normal eyes and canine teeth. When it landed briefly on top of an abandoned building, Officer Kimball could make out the creature's tail, which was approximately five feet in length. Police dispatch receives calls of gargoyle sighting in Cherry Hill Township at also approximately 843. The dispatch received multiple calls coming into their office reporting something that looked like a gargoyle atop one of the buildings located along Haddonfield Road. According to the witnesses, they too described a creature standing nearly seven feet tall with wings that were large and bat-like behind the shoulders. The wingspan itself was estimated to be around 13 feet across. Other witnesses have sightings of reptilian humanoids in the Pensacon Township at approximately 3.17 a.m. Multiple witnesses called into the PD to report what they can only be described as a strange flying reptilian creature. They said it had red glowing eyes, large wings, and massive black talons. Two thousand ten, right around five thirty a.m., Officer Blacksmith received a call about a hulking figure seen lurking about near the intersection of U.S. Two and Forty One. He arrived at the scene to discover that a female motorist had witnessed the creature crossing in front of her vehicle as she traveled along U.S. Two into town. Additionally, Officer Blacksmith talked with two hunters who had also seen the same creature. The first hunter stated that he was nearly run off the road by it, while the other told him directly that he had encountered it firsthand. The witnesses are all experienced hunters familiar with what they should be seeing out there in order to safely navigate their way through these woods, all during deer season. One witness specifically said that he has never seen anything like this before, but it definitely was not human. It was massive. It was black or really dark brown, 
I could not tell what direction it was headed. It all happened so fast. Officer Blacksmith described the area near where he made contact with the witness as being very wet and overgrown. Lots of thick underbrush. He also said that it's known to be an area where hunters have complained about encountering strange phenomena while out in the woods during hunting season. Blacksmith stated that normally when he receives calls like this, they come from local townspeople who are also unfamiliar with the territory, making them easily identifiable when spotted by officers on patrol. Blacksmith went on to state that these two specific eyewitnesses were definitely not locals. Having spent most of their lives living in part of the Upper Peninsula, he said that his well over a decade of patrolling the area, he's never had to respond to something like this before, although it's no doubt harvested his interest in researching and hunting these reported creatures. Nineteen ninety nine. Reports of a large bipedal canine resembling a hyena have been reported around Grand Rapids in the lower peninsula of Michigan. Officer Blackburn reports his incident. February second, nineteen ninety nine. I responded to a call for an unidentified animal spotted on King Highway near Riesland Drive in Comstock Park, since we serve the entire county. The witnesses said that they were driving when they saw something run across the road and into some nearby woods. They described it as about six feet tall, black fur, and a long tail that was moving quickly. Its movements were very fluid and similar to that of a kangaroo. They kept expecting to see it jump over a ditch, but it never did. The one thing they were sure of was that it ran on two legs. I went into the wooded area, immediately began seeing tracks in the snow. I followed them for about 15 minutes, until I lost them at a steep embankment. There was no way anyone could scale that bank with feet like those, about 20 inches long, massive canine feet, without using their hands too. It should be noted that these sounds are heard during daylight hours only, and thus far, there has been no sighting of what would be construed as Bigfoot during darkness, which is considered very unusual, if indeed this creature exists as most Bigfoot sightings occur at night or dusk and dawn conditions. Witnesses have been exclusively rural residents. They claim to have been hunting, hiking, etc. when they heard the sounds and then spotted a large bipedal canine figure in their vicinity. It really makes you wonder. An unknown bipedal canine was reported being sighted by a police officer just west of Highway 164 in Richfield, Wisconsin. On July 18th, 2021, 8.30 p.m., a police officer who will remain anonymous was driving eastbound on Pleasant Hill Road, roughly one and a half miles west of Highway 164 in Richfield. He caught something moving just off the side of the road. He slowed down to have a look and got out for a better look, as well as shining his flashlight over in the darkness. His attention turned towards something in the trees, and he saw two large eyes staring back at him, which were apparently high up. It took him several seconds to find their source, supposedly what looked like legs. It was standing there, completely motionless. At least, that's how it appeared to him, and was reflecting light from its eyes. The officer describes the figure as being very tall, well over seven feet, covered in very fine hair, having long arms and two legs that were proportionally large. It was upright, like a person, hawks in the legs like a dog. The officer claims there is no sound at all, just complete silence from this thing and outside. After observing it for several seconds, he gets back in his car, drives off. He is 100% sure that it's what he saw. It was not a bear or anything like that. He has seen bear hunting on his off time multiple times. This was far more canine-like in appearance. The area near where the setting took place is reportedly known for unexplained sounds and apparently screams coming from the forest. Think like strange cries. The officer has also seen strange things before while patrolling the same area. Footprints, sounds, sightings. Now, I myself have a very good friend 
who has also reported seeing two large-legged figures covered in fur right around this same location. These figures were standing right next to a tree on the south side of the road, close to the shoulder. The road in this area is curvy. He also said he caught eye shine, and the eyes were very large. We said he probably saw this for about three seconds. His headlights caught this, and he is 100% positive he saw something. He said his heart dropped, and he immediately called me while still driving. I knew something unique based on his demeanor and tone had happened. About 45 minutes after he had called me, I went back to the site with him. We brought our dog. Every time we stopped or approached this area, where the sighting was, he started to whimper, and the dog would not let us get any closer. As we were getting close and in a place where we could actually pull off and stop, something very loud happened behind us that startled both of us. A loud growl. I swear, it came from one spot, right next to the road, then moved into these trees where it sounded like at least two animals fighting for five seconds. That's what my friend said. It made me start talking. Then, his question got cut off by another sound. This disturbance causing our dog to start whining and whimpering would not go any further. We stood there for a good while listening to the woods, but did not proceed further. The area where we parked is very secluded. Nobody was out there. It was like 10 p.m. We knew what we heard. We knew it was not a bear or any other large animal that is known, because of how it sounded. Its proximity to the road, and the fact you could pinpoint its location. It also was moving in a way that made us think person. This creature seemed aggressive because of what just happened. We then decided to back off into top speed on our vehicle, so we would get out of the area quickly, should other disturbances happen, which, still caused me to call my friend while driving stupidly fast down this road. The noises stopped, so I felt better. Thank you for your time to read this. I know it was long, but I just want to make sure you had all the information you needed. I'm going to remain anonymous for this, but I had a sighting of something that I can't explain in 2011, springtime. And during the time, I was working as a police officer for a small town in northwestern Oklahoma. What made me take an interest in this particular case was the description given to me by the witness. It sounded just like how other witnesses have described other abnormals, to include Sasquatch. I had one individual come to the department as they were reporting what they thought they saw appeared to be a man with long black hair, no shirt or clothes, standing near their pond at about one o'clock in the morning. Apparently, it looked like they were holding a knife or some sort of weapon. As he noticed them, looking out their window, he began walking into the woodline, disappearing from view nonetheless, never returning, only after several attempts of trying to find him by the reporting party. I'm not sure what he had actually had in his hand. I never asked of a description of it specifically, but I began to do some research on my own, I came across several websites dedicated to Bigfoot sightings, where individuals could almost describe perfectly, with many others, what they had seen. In my years as an officer, before retiring from law enforcement, I've come across multiple reports of unusual creatures being seen all throughout Oklahoma, as well as neighboring states. In fact, just last year alone, I had another retired law enforcement officer tell me all about an experience that their own individual mother-in-law had while she lived out on a farm near Elk City. She told him about a time she had gone out to her chicken coop and had a face-to-face -face encounter with a small monkey-type animal, standing on two feet without hair, looked like it was wearing pants, who began making loud sounds before running away. It appeared as if it had jumped over multiple fences, only to disappear into the tree line. I also know that many people have reported seeing humanoid creatures looking similar to how Bigfoot looked and how Bigfoot is described, all through various areas all around Elk City, Shawnee as well, and even the town I grew up in, Guthrie, where witnesses and victims claim these creatures prey on livestock, chickens, goats, pigs, everything. This is also not the only time I've received reports involving unusual creatures. 
that match what has been described by the witness to include Bigfoot or Sasquatch. I'm sure these things happen all the time throughout the U.S. and even other countries throughout the world. However, I'm most familiar with Oklahoma, and it appears to be designated for many areas of things like this. I really doubt a lot of these stories are made up. If you got a chance to sit down and talk to these witnesses, they're terrified. Something is happening here. What could these creatures be? How does somebody prove their existence without anyone ever actually catching one? Do they really exist in different forms? January of 2001. Officer Bradwick encountered what he described as a tall being reminding him of Nosferatu. It terrified him. His story is one of the scariest reports on record. This story has remained unsolved to this day, and has had more eyes on it than anything I've ever written about yet. He saw something, and I could tell you fairly certainly that whatever it was could not just be simply explained away. I was driving down the road in Franklin County, Texas. It was around 2.30 in the morning. I had just passed under a streetlight. It was very dim, but I could see everything outside of its illumination. I was looking up at some movement on the right side of the road. There were cow paths through this area, and it looked like something large had ran across my path. I slowed down to about 45 miles per hour, thinking I would let whatever it was pass me if I wanted to cross here. Now, as soon as I did this, what appeared to be a man traveling on all fours jumped up from off the ground, flying and leaping over my car. The being that Bradwick saw was well over eight feet tall, pale white, and had a sickly looking face and skin. Long claws, eyes that were yellow and green, a very pronounced face, sharp features, bald, sharp pointy ears, and whitish, deathly bluish skin which is why he made the Nosferatu reference. He said it also kind of reminded him of a vampire bat in the face. Could this be some sort of ancient creature, like a vampire or a demon? Is it out here eating cows? Or perhaps this is the mysterious chupacabra, responsible for draining the blood out of many livestock animals. What do you think? August of 2000 Detective Jason Schaefer says he saw an 8-9 to nine foot tall upright figure at about 1.53 a.m. He was in pursuit of three suspicious men in a vehicle. The entity in question was standing in the middle of the road, blocking his way. The detective slammed on his brakes, but got out of the car to make sure that he was not hallucinating. The creature ran, probably about 40-50 to 50 miles an hour clearing the highway in two leaps. For more than half an hour after this experience, Schaefer's hands shook uncontrollably to such an extent he could not even hold a cup of coffee. He has not returned to that location since his encounter. It's been speculated that this entity is a form of Bigfoot, but since no other sightings have been reported at the time, I cannot conclude that with any certainty. However, I have heard several stories of what is being called shadow people, all throughout the Atlanta area. This leads me to believe that the general population are not coming forward with their own sightings, for fear of ridicule, humiliation, while some do not even know that these entities exist. I'm sure there are many more people out there who have had encounters or experienced paranormal phenomena. They just don't realize it. They've never had any prior knowledge of them. This is why I'm sharing his story. Please feel free to share this experience with your friends and family. But remember, keep an open mind. Thank you for taking the time to read about Mr. Schaefer's experience. Eight o three a.m. Officer was dispatched to a disturbance in the downtown area. Upon arrival, was flagged down by a college student who had been walking back to a friend's house. The student stated that she had been walking down the street and heard weird cat-type noises as if there were two large cats fighting around the corner of the apartment building. As she got closer, it sounded as though the fight was moving away from her at a much faster speed. The officer made his way towards the direction that was being described 
and found nothing upon arriving at said location. Officer then began driving through the neighborhood, hearing no further reports, stopping at one point to observe some kids playing basketball. While stopped and idling, however, he heard and saw what can only be described as a very large, very dark, bipedal animal darting behind one of the buildings. The officer immediately turned around to investigate, found nothing upon arrival at said location. Note, this has been cross-referenced with a police report from earlier this year, detailing a similar occurrence in January, involving an unknown creature standing on two legs and looking in through an apartment window before disappearing behind the building that it was seen beside. The woman involved in that case stated she had seen previous issues with her cat going missing. This is after behaving strangely for several days on end preceding each disappearance and death, since this is not the first cat to have happened to. These two cases could not be related, as no direct correlation could be made between either person's statement or their prior history with any type of animal life. The officer found nothing upon arriving at said location. However, the second sighting occurred within 60 days. As such, it does indeed constitute a second sighting. The animal was characterized by being bipedal, dark in color, with two glowing yellow eyes, which also were described as feline. No further information is exactly available at this time. No correlation between the sightings have been established. A search of the area involved turned up no signs of any animals matching either officer's description. No correlating reports have been made from neighboring precincts. However, further investigation into any possible link with that case from January is currently ongoing. I'll keep looking for anything else that might be related to this one. But right now, everything points toward a dead end on this one too. June 22nd, 2013. Officer Jameson spotted what he describes as a dogman in the middle of a dirt road, standing on its hind legs, looking directly at the officer. This is an interesting case, due to being so close to where I live. The creature, I believe, has been seen many times by locals since 1995, when Officer Jameson had run into this one. I've talked with several people that have seen it, including two that saw the creature at different times, ten months apart. Both people I've talked to had told me they, too, had seen a dogman in the area of Kempner. This is in Texas slash Cotton, Oklahoma. The area is located just off of US-75 between Crum and Sanger. From talking with several people who live in that area, including a former police officer, the creature had been seen many times all throughout the years. The first time I heard about this creature was from a gentleman who was a local government official of one of the nearby towns. He wishes to remain anonymous. He stated that he had family members who live in Kempner. They had told him of their encounters with the dogman as well as seeing it chasing several deer on multiple occasions. A little bit more investigating led me to Officer Jameson and his sighting of the strange creature back in 95, as well as recent cell phone pictures taken by an Oklahoma construction worker, detailing and showing an animal standing upright like a man near the I-35 between Durant and Gainesville, heading into Texas. Officer Jameson's encounter with what we believe may be the very same creature prompted me to contact and reach other officials who deal with cryptozoology. We all agree that this may be a dogman and is possibly related to the two sightings of a strange animal that had been eating livestock in southern Oklahoma, near Lawton, by ranchers going back many decades. We believe it may even be responsible for killing and eating two calves in northern Fannin County back in 2011, as well as a horse being killed and partially eaten in Cole County, near Bromide, in 2013. This is after a sighting by a school bus driver on Highway 69, east of Tishomingo, who also saw tracks nearby. After speaking with several locals about the recent encounters, including one family who had also held several possible Sasquatch encounters near their home, my partner and I will be heading up to study the area and search for possible denning sites. Wish me luck. Two thousand one officer n writes this in late 2001 i was patrolling in a mountainous rural area near las vegas new mexico my unit 
a fully marked police cruiser, was parked on the south side of the road next to some darker woods, while my partner and I sat inside talking while he filled out paperwork. It was about 5 a.m., just getting daylight enough for us to see clearly through the windows without our headlights on. Suddenly, we both noted movement at the edge of the bushes right along where there would be no path or roadway. Something very large began lumbering across the open ground towards us. As it got closer, we could tell it had four legs with hooves, but what really caught our attention were its arms. Long muscular forms swinging back and forth like an ape. The animal covered about a hundred yards in the time it took the headlights to circle through the windshield, since we were still sitting idle, and when it cleared the headlights, we could tell it was very, very large, at least eight feet tall. We both jumped out of the car, with my partner behind me, reaching for his gun while I went towards its direction without drawing my weapon. The animal apparently realized this, taking off into the woods on all fours. However, when I entered into these same woods, attempting to follow it, there was no sign of any tracking or disturbance in the thick brush. This would suggest that somebody had ran through there. I talked to the other officers in neighboring towns who later told me they'd also see reports of a wild man in the area. There were other reports from the same period where horses had been talked about being spooked and large human-like footprints being found alongside of them. Our department has spent about an hour tracking it to no avail, and we never saw it again. Nineteen sixty nine. Officer Miller is reported to have encountered a being in the New London County on two separate occasions while patrolling. The first incident took place around midnight, and he saw the creature only fifteen feet away from his parked cruiser. It was large, covered with short dark hair, had no clothes or jewelry on of any kind, and these large gray eyes that glowed similar to the way a flashlight does. The second sighting occurred several months later after Officer Miller received information about an unrelated incident involving three missing people who were hunting in the area while where he sighted the creature once before. Officer Miller stated that they went out to investigate, setting up some traps for it. They did not find anything, though, due to the heavy rainfall. He claims it was around five weeks later, while off-duty at home. The telephone rang. It was the deputy sheriff in charge of investigating the missing people, who wanted to know if he had seen anything unusual. Officer Miller said that due to the heavy rainfall, there was no way for it to leave evidence, but told him what he had saw five weeks prior. The officer described the creature as being around seven to eight feet tall, covered in short dark hair, and a very ugly face. The eyes were also said to be glowing this weird gray faint color. During the summer of 1973, Detective Bradson was called to investigate a complaint about an unknown animal killing livestock. It was first thought to be a wolf or coyote, but that notion was quickly dismissed. While walking through the woods, he came upon what appeared to be large tracks, followed them as they led into a swamp area with very heavy and thick vegetation. He stated that once he had entered the area, it felt like somebody was watching him, and he had noticed a pair of bright green eyes in the distance. Detective Bradson pulled out his gun, firing a warning shot into the air, but the eyes soon disappeared. He stated that he left when it began to get dark, thinking that whatever that was was watching him. It would not bother him if he turned his back on it, so he decided to leave. Bradson described the same creature that was in Miller's report, only four years prior to this happening. 2005. New Orleans, 2005. There had been a call about an individual that had possibly broken into the home of an elderly person who was now deceased. After further investigation into the case, another call came in standing. There was two suspicious individuals prowling around the property of a boarded-up house near the swamps. The officers responded and found what they described as two men wearing black suits, which stood about six feet. They were standing in the shadows when they approached. The police officers both made the decision to shoot at them, but somehow these individuals vanished into thin air. There were no signs of any footprints or how they escaped. There had been nothing that could have provided them a bridge for their escape. No cover or anything nearby that would have allowed them. 
The area had been searched thoroughly and could not find a single trace of the two men that were described. The second sighting took place just weeks later when another individual who was out late claimed that he had been abducted by an unknown creature. They believe it may have been the same two men as before that they described, creatures being very tall and very pale, with no hair, the face appearing to be more skull-like, but there were still enough features present that they could see it was very human-like. The witness said that it tried to talk to them, but their vocal cords were not made for speaking the language that they heard. They had no clue what language they were speaking, but it was something very different about these creatures than most people would expect to ever find out in the swamps of New Orleans. New Orleans PD officer Mike Farrell stated to the media that he had been able to find any information online about these creatures. It would be unlikely for people to believe their story if they did not see it for themselves. He said that there have also been other sightings in the area, but nothing else is substantial as to what was reported by his own partners. There were no traces of blood or any other kind of medical equipment, anything that would have been used to transport the body from the scene where they found it. Their reports seemed to indicate that somebody had just dropped an elderly woman on the front lawn and left her body. Now, the latest story had been relayed by a man who was a senior officer at the New Orleans PD. He was an off-duty cop, but had stopped into a local bar to grab something to eat and drink before heading home. While eating, he saw another officer walk in, looking rather disturbed about something that had happened on the shift. The senior officer asked him if everything was all right. He responded by saying they had been sent to do a welfare check on an elderly woman. When they arrived, nobody was at the location. The house did not appear to have been entered, so they went back to check on the vehicle, continue with surveillance on the property. They noticed a light on in the window, which made them decide to rush into the house. But again, there were no signs somehow of electricity even being turned on or connected, which doesn't make any sense. They checked the entire place, didn't find anyone or anything, so they went back out to resume surveillance. While standing by the front door, an officer said he saw movement in his peripheral. It startled him. He looked into the shadows that were cast by the trees, and he saw movement, which made him believe that something was coming towards them. A second officer stepped closer, to see what he was looking at, and both of them realized they were staring at two figures walking up to the house. The first one they described as being very tall, walking with very long strides. The other was quite small in comparison. They are not sure if it was a child or someone shorter than average height. The officers that night decided not to pursue these figures. I think it was a combination of being a little too spooked, and the fact that these figures evaded them by disappearing into the shadows. One of the accompanying officers on the scene also reported a strange electrical feeling in the air, but wasn't sure if that had anything to do with any of the strange occurrences around the elderly woman missing or the fact that she had no electricity running to her house, yet there were still lights on in the room. All very strange things that cannot be explained. In this report, the officer wishes to remain completely anonymous, but had a sighting of a strange humanoid werewolf-looking creature while patrolling a rural section of Baxter County, Arkansas. The creature had been spotted on a four-way stop by another officer, and as such, the first-handed officer was sent to investigate. When he arrived at the location, the strange-looking humanoid made its appearance, beginning to walk across one of the roads into some nearby brush. As it turns out, this area is part of a long history that includes werewolf-type activity, as well as strange, unexplainable animal deaths and disappearances. There was no time to see how big this creature was. It very quickly disappeared into a nearby wooded area. The officer did make a search of the location and discovered several sets of tracks in the dirt roads. But, because it had rained recently, there were not enough for a clear picture of what might have been responsible. The report went on to state while this particular section does not get its share of strange activity, including other types of animal mutilations and sightings by local residents, this is the only official complaint from an officer thus far. Other officers from the same department have also come forward to discuss their knowledge of the area, including one who claimed that his own grandfather had told him about a werewolf-type creature living around here. 
because his location was so remote. Few people ever went there. There were no other reports until now. Since then, there have been a string of stories from around the world on some very strange and disturbing creatures, including a few, like on sites like Reddit, where people have also claimed to see werewolf-type creatures. Although this is nothing new, as there have been reports of these beings seen back for centuries here in America, there was one interesting note that made this one stand out among all others. That was an incident involving a mother and child who saw what they thought was a Bigfoot moving along near their home just outside of town. They got into position with their camera and began recording. What happened next is something that those who have seen werewolves before will only find it too familiar. The description given sounds like it could be a dog or a wolf that is suffering from mange possibly, which causes hair loss and other physical ailments. However, there is one important note here, and it has to do with the apparent bad smell that was given off by this sickly-looking animal. That's right. Dogmen, Bigfoots, werewolves, they've all been reported in association with some very bad odors, and this particular sighting seems more than likely when you consider its location. There have been reports of similar sightings around these parts, so people do live in here and are aware of what they might be seeing. Yet another report involved two separate officers, each having their own stories to tell about the incidents they've had while patrolling this particular part of Arkansas, with most of these reports occurred during the night. Although, there is very little known about these encounters. Most people who have seen them describe them as being around 5 to 6 feet tall, looking very gaunt and thin. There is also a mention of glowing eyes, which, if you read many reports, seems to be a common link among all these types. One officer stated that he had been out in the same area, and he saw something moving quickly through the trees. At first, he thought it might be an animal, but then another report came over his radio about a Bigfoot sighting nearby, so this was close enough to make him feel uneasy about what he might actually have seen. And yet another report. A Kessna pilot was flying his small plane at about 5 a.m., he came upon what looked like a huge hairy creature that had also been spotted by several other pilots in this rural region of Arkansas. This particular officer stated that people who live in these areas have been telling stories for years now about how they've encountered these strange creatures, and even some said they knew of some who hunt them. Out of the most interesting encounters I found, this one involved a police officer from the Callan County who responded to an animal complaint one evening near the town of De Quincey. As he arrived on scene, he saw two sets of eyes coming up from behind a nearby tree, which he described as being extremely bright. This was the first sighting of what he thought was a huge canine-type creature, but then it opened its mouth and let out this unearthly growl, causing him to back up in fear. The officer who saw this said that whatever it was, it must have been eight feet tall, grayish-dark smoky fur all over its body. And lastly... The final sighting occurred on Highway 165 near Wilmer, where another cop had responded to a call about kids who claimed they'd seen a Bigfoot or werewolf type of person. According to their description, this thing had very long arms, raccoon or human-like hands, and it was enough to scare the officer away from the sighting. On the evening of July 7th, 2007, police officer Jim Corder was patrolling an area of the swamp in Lauderdale County, Mississippi. He noticed two red dots reflecting in his headlights. The object turned out to be an animal which appeared similar to that of an alligator, but had legs and arms with thumbs on each hand. According to reports, it walked upright like a human being, or like a man. The sighting lasted for about 20 seconds before the creature quickly moved off into the darkness under the tree canopy. Officer Corder stated that there were no houses in the immediate vicinity, and that this was not far from one of several alligators were spotted earlier in the week. He said that there is no way it could have been mistaken for any other type of animal. Corder immediately reported the incident to his supervisor, who was completely surprised by what he had said. A chopper with thermal imaging devices was requested after daybreak, but nothing could be found or the following morning. It's speculated that this creature was the Lizard Man, also in part of the Mothman legend. Supposedly, 
One of the first Lizardman sightings came from an oil rig worker who saw it crossing nearby in Scarberry, West Virginia in December. The local residents claim there are caves along the swamps where bodies were taken to be experimented on during World War II, all done by Japanese scientists who were brought here for the purpose under Operation Paperclip. Some believe these experiments created what are now called lizard men, but keep in mind it's all speculation. Of course, there's other infamous cases, like the 1980s lizard man of Scape or Swamp in South Carolina, detailing a young man who stopped on the side of the road to deal something with his car, when out of the swamp came a large humanoid lizard that chased him. Yet there was another encounter. A man claimed he was hunting in the swamp, and he saw something that looked like what he described as a seven-foot-tall lizard walking out into the swamp, trained to look at him before wading off into the water. This is a not-so-popular account, and easily is overshadowed by the young man's. Although this hunter's account came roughly three years after the boys did. He claims it had scales, bright green eyes, and was only about 30 feet away from him. When shown the drawing of the young boy from the scape or swamp situation in 1984, he said it looked identical. Another local resident who claims to have seen this creature states, I don't know what I saw, but whatever it was, it was not human, and it has scared me so bad. I'm still afraid to go back out there alone. Sightings of similar creatures have been reported in many of the areas around the world. Central and South America, Africa, Australia, Japan, and China. In most cases where witnesses have been able to give detailed descriptions, it's been closely related to a bipedal reptile with scales. Even Native Americans have told their stories about these creatures. They speak of a giant lizard-like monster that hunts and eats humans, especially human children. Some cultures held lizardmen as gods, while others believe them to be man-eaters and more like animals than men, while others believe them to be demonic deities. Lauderdale County Sheriff Billy Soley states, We're not saying this thing doesn't exist. We just haven't come up with any evidence yet to prove it. Those who live in or near this area claim they will continue looking until they find some evidence. In conclusion of this report, I would like to state that there are many other first-hand reports of witness sightings, experiences, and encounters. These should not be taken lightly, as they could very well cause panic if released to the wrong people or put into the wrong hands. If you have any more information detailing this creature, or know anybody who has had an encounter with it, please contact me by email. There is several sightings reported all around Sedgwick County, all by different law enforcement officials. Sightings are rare, but they do happen. The day of October 17th, 2010, yet another officer working out of Sedgwick County had his very own sighting. He was on patrol in the backwoods of the Wichita area, and he saw something that will never leave him. An unknown, large, horned humanoid was seen by this officer, and it is hard to believe what he wrote in the report of what really happened. At approximately 7 a.m., I was dispatched to an abandoned residence for a suspicion person call. I arrived at the location, did not see anybody or anything suspicious around the house, so I ran tracks north into some nearby woods along with Sergeant. As we were tracking, I believed and I saw something along the east hilltop through the brush, I could not tell what it was, but I thought it was a person hunched over, moving northbound behind some covering. I alerted Sergeant A to be on the lookout for whatever it was that I had seen. Sergeant A caught up to where I was at, asked me, what did you see? As he approached, both of us clearly heard very heavy footsteps coming from our 10 o'clock position. We saw nothing, so we proceeded west towards our vehicle where we would have had better lighting to investigate the area, because whatever this thing or person was, they were being extremely cautious in their movement. Both Sergeant and I saw what appeared to be an extremely tall, six-foot grayish or possibly brown-colored subject, standing upright but hunched over. As this being noticed our presence, it turned to its left side, as if it was attempting to conceal itself with some tree coverage. 
Sergeant A asked me if I had seen the same thing that he just saw. We both then observed what happened to be a large set of horns pointing up from around its head area, very reminiscent to a goat or a ram. What we saw next froze us in our tracks. This being lifted up its right arm over its head, which allowed us to see that it had a huge hand with large black claws. It resembled a paw, but much more like that of a hand. There are no reports that match this particular sighting, but the area has a plethora of Bigfoot sightings reported by other officers, and yet another sighting report by a deputy sheriff. He was called by a citizen reporting Bigfoot activity in the area. The deputy sheriff met the witness at the location where the sighting had taken place. The deputy describes what he saw. As he started to investigate the area, my partner and I clearly saw something standing about 200 yards away from us. It did not appear human. We could only see its head and shoulders as it appeared to be looking into a ravine, or possibly at something coming up out of the ravine. What I remember seeing are two very bright eyes above some vegetation. My partner stated, It's Bigfoot. We both took off toward an open field nearby, trying to cut it off before it got back over the hillside close to Highway 54. But we lost sight of it. My partner went up to the spot where we had seen it, staying back near the ravine, thinking that Bigfoot was still standing at the bottom of our viewing area. My partner stated, I don't see anything. We both began to walk toward each other, and as we did, we noticed a very large grayish colored subject looking above us from an embankment. It seemed to be watching us as if curious about what we were doing. The creature then ran down into a heavily wooded area on top of a hillside which would have put it close to the highway again, even though my partner and I were fairly deep into this open field with no trees or other obstacles between us and it. My partner and I both got a clear look at it running away from us. It did not stand up and walk like a human does, but it did appear to be on two legs, although its speed was very incredible for something large. I have been in law enforcement for over 22 years now, and I've never had anything come close to happening like this did. Other than evidence left behind, we did not get any pictures or videos of the creature, but my partner, I think, got some footage while we were chasing what we thought was going to be a Bigfoot back into the wooded area after having lost sight of it earlier when we first ran through the brush trying to cut it off before it got past us. Unfortunately, he lost access to that camera, taken by his supervisors. My partner and I both felt that the creature knew which direction we would go to cut it off. So by going opposite directions, it caused us to split up, allowing it time to get away from us. During this encounter, I was wearing my uniform but not my body armor or equipment belt, which can be limiting at times, especially when trying to chase someone or something heavily to the brush. I have read the setting report filed by Officer B, which also reported a large upright grayish colored subject only about 20 feet away from him at around 8.25 in the morning near Highway 54 just outside of Sedgwick County, Kansas on December 5th, 2011. This is also right around the same time approximately that myself and my partner were chasing a very large unknown subject through the field. My partner and I both heard something walking through the tall grass around us moving in another direction. It sounded far too heavy to be a human. We did not hear it running, but we did get a clear view of it, approximately 150 yards away from us, looking down. That's a day I'll never forget. This report details an unusual and frightening nighttime encounter with a large canine creature during an overnight patrol shift by two Dallas County Sheriff's Office police deputies. The report states that the officers, parking on the shoulder of 135 southbound, underneath Interstate 35, between mile markers 142 and 141, near West Des Moines, Iowa, at around 2.30 a.m., as they observed northbound traffic, a very large and identified canine creature emerged from some nearby cornfields, headed towards their vehicle. The first deputy stated that it ran across the road in front of them very, very quickly. He estimated that it was about 30 yards away before disappearing into the black. The animal made no sound as it approached or when it crossed the highway. He said that not only was its gait unlike a dog, 
but it was very large and covered a wider distance with each stride. Further, its light tan coloring blended in with the gravel road. The deputy also stated he noticed some unusual features, such as very long hair, like a horse's mane, down the middle of its back. He considered this to be abnormal for a canine creature, as all the other dogs have seen short hair on their backs. The second deputy said that she first saw the animal at about 45 degrees from her right window as it crossed directly in front of them without ever slowing down or deviating from its straight path. She estimated that it ran at least 30 feet before becoming obscured by darkness as it entered a cornfield alongside the interstate. She also said that she noticed long hair from its back as well. The first deputy stated that the animal's gait was not normal for a canine as it traveled much wider than a man with each stride and that during the few moments before it entered the field of corn, he could not make out any discernible features, but did notice an odd coloration, which matched the ground. He added that this creature was like a bipedal German shepherd, but very, very large. Both officers were able to observe this creature for only a few short seconds before it disappeared ultimately into the darkness, and they described a very moonlit night with pretty good visibility. The very first deputy felt he had seen something unusual, but both officers decided to maintain radio silence about their sighting, out of concern they would be perceived as crazy. Afterwards, the first deputy immediately asked to do a search on Google Earth for any Iowa landowner who may have used horses in an unusual manner, which can indicate a possible connection with this canine. He said he quickly located what appeared to be a horse stable surrounded by cornfields nearby, discovered it belonged to a man who was originally from Arizona, and had experience with such animals like mountain lions, bears, and even skinwalkers, apparently. The deputy decided to make further inquiries to this lead. However, he did not want to risk being seen as suspicious or appears if this primary purpose was for getting information related to the sighting. The owner of the property declined an interview. The Des Moines County Sheriff's Office, Iowa Department of Natural Resources, and a senior biologist from the Iowa Department of Natural Resources was unable to identify any native species which matched this officer's description. A Texas veterinarian who specializes in examining hair samples was consulted, but stated that she would need a blood sample or tissue sample for proper analysis. The first deputy obtained some hair found on the shoulder of 135 southbound, However, it was disposed of after being improperly preserved due to procedural error. A second attempt at obtaining a sample from that area, although another source proved unsuccessful as well. In August of 2010, I had my very own sighting of something similar while working third shift patrol with another deputy for Dallas County Precinct 3, Constable's Office near Forney, Texas. I was stopped at the intersection of County Road 298, and Stell Bridge Road, facing eastbound on CR-298, with my emergency lights activated, I observed something unusual traveling northbound off to my left, or north, in a small wooded area. At first, it looked like it might be a large armadillo, or some other form of rodent that had crawled into the brush for shelter. But this thing was moving very fast, and it was moving through thick undergrowth. It didn't seem too large at first, but it certainly kept its distance across the drainage ditch as it continued northbound towards me at about 15 miles an hour, zigzagging back and forth between trees, sometimes losing ground. As it got closer, I noticed that this creature, too, had a long mane and shaggy hair, reminding me of a horse, but the motion was different. The most unusual thing I observed about this animal is that it seemed almost alien and robotic in its movements, walking upright on two legs but with very long strides, like how somebody would run through tall grass while pretending to be Tarzan or something. As it approached my location, about 65 feet away, I got out of my vehicle and I could hear some dogs barking in the distance at what seemed like the same time when this thing emerged from the trees on the other side of CR-298. After observing me, this thing turned around, running back into the brush where it disappeared, with an expression on its face like, uh-oh, I didn't mean to be caught. As far as size, 
I would estimate it to be roughly five feet tall, but very slender, covered with thick hair. I remained on the scene for about 15 minutes afterwards, thinking the same thing might exit the brush on the other side, but it never did. I felt if there were any aggressive thoughts in its mind towards me, simply because I was a stranger, it could have easily taken me down, since we were only separated by a ditch and several trees. Witnesses who live in that area report that they frequently see stray dogs and feral hogs near their homes. People dump unwanted pets into this woods all the time, but nobody seems to know what this thing actually is. Maybe all those pets make for a food source of whatever that is. Now, a third deputy had also reported seeing tracks, which he believed to be from the same creature at a very similar location. After several weeks, though, of attempting to relocate the tracks, they were lost. I find it strange that this is not more widely known about, since I have been told by state and local authorities numerous people have reported seeing something very similar over the years in that area. A few others claim to have heard extremely loud screams, which sound like a woman being murdered, coming from deep in those same woods. Since there's never been any evidence found of violent deaths or missing persons who match the description, official explanations for these events usually range from wild dogs and coyotes to escaped exotic pets, such as monkeys and lions. However, some locals believe it could be an undiscovered species that we know nothing about, such as a Sasquatch or an undocumented breed of primate. The only clue we have ever found was a single set of prints, which were discovered to be from a man's work boot, maybe accidentally dropped during his normal duties. Perhaps there really is something out there, and it could be right under our noses. This report details the sighting made by a police officer to an apparent bipedal canid in a suburban township of a large city along the Navajo. The original sighting came from two boys who were riding their bicycles. They spotted what they thought was a man walking with a dog, but upon closer inspection, they realized it was not a man. It wasn't very long after this that an officer also reported seeing something very similar during his own patrol shift. It had been raining for some time, so there was plenty of mud to have casted footprints and possibly even made impressions upon leading up to the officer's first encounter. The police officer first noticed some sort of unusual activity at around 7.30 p.m. on May 23, 2011. It was very shortly after this, he got out of his vehicle to investigate, leaving the engine running in case he needed to make a quick getaway. The officer had seen something large beneath some trees on the other side of a wire fence that had been knocked down beneath power lines. As it looked up at him, he saw what appeared to be a canine but standing on two legs instead of four. The creature did not stay around for too long. There's no more information about its exact size or weight available. It was described as being at least six feet tall, reddish-brown fur all over its body, which could be interpreted by some people as being fur-like. Whatever this creature was, it sure knew how to quickly escape from the officer, as there's no clear information on its speed or general mannerisms. The boys immediately had called their father, described what they had seen as a tall man. The sighting drew a lot of attention to the area, and soon, other people began reporting seeing similar creatures. In fact, a Navajo tribal officer also witnessed what he would call a skinwalker, reported it to be at least six to seven feet tall and walking around the same neighborhood, although that was a separate incident altogether and occurred right after some time after the boy's own sighting. This report included a statement by a third witness who claimed the creature may have been used for some sort of camouflage or stealth while hiding in some trees or brush about 50 feet away. Shortly before seeing the officer, this man said he had heard dogs barking and howling in a terrible way. This bipedal canine was also described as being covered in dark hair that was more reddish brown. This eyewitness account came from an 18-year-old Navajo male who claimed to have also seen the creature on May 24, 2011, right around 12.30 a.m. near his home. It is unknown whether or not all three witnesses were together during any part of their sighting, 
but it seems likely due to the creature's size being so similar. The police officer's sighting happened within less than a mile away from where these two others had saw this. Thanks to Lyle Blackburn for his assistance with this report. On March 22nd, 2013, Officer Mike Milnor was checking out a report of missing livestock in the area around Luca Chukai, Arizona. Officer Milnor and Navajo officers joined in on the search and investigation in an attempt to find some clues as to where they could find where the animals had been taken, since there was no sign of any dead animals immediately. It wasn't long when Officer Larry Wanuka came upon heavy footprints, which would eventually conclude belonged to only one set of tracks. These tracks led them towards a valley, along two cliffs, which were close together. It was there they found where the mutilated animals had been killed and taken, their throats ripped open, and tongues removed. Officer Milnor climbed up into one of the cliff's areas, armed with his rifle, keeping watch of what he believed to be more than one of these things here. What happened next was simply amazing. The officer would tell cryptozoologists exclusively that while he was at his post, he heard the sound of something large walking towards him. He said this, I couldn't see anything, but I kept hearing it get closer and closer. I turned on my light and saw this very large dark figure about 15 to 20 feet away. He describes it as being huge, but having nothing specific in its features. Not even eyes or a mouth, just plain skin all over its body, completely naked, no new genitalia of any kind either. And once spotted, before the officer could promptly react, the being darted off. It was just a crazy moment. I've been working in the area for about 10 years now. I've never heard of or seen anything like that. I've heard of talk of skinwalkers, but I never thought that that's what they would look like, assuming that was a skinwalker. He adds that he does not believe it was a skinwalker, but admits he's not the most educated person when it comes to Navajo mythology and folklore. However, his department chief is well aware of what has been seen and states they do know who the creature might be referencing, one particular shaman. At first, we all laughed it off, Officer Milnor concludes, but after seeing what this thing did to our animals, there's no doubt in my mind, whatever this is, it does exist. Keep in mind, there's been a lot of speculation before about skinwalkers. Sure, many of the Navajo people believe them, but a lot of the state and law enforcement officials do not. Back in 2009, a video that supposedly showed one upright walking man went viral. This is apparently the first time that an officer had ever had an up-and-close personal encounter with what might be one of these creatures. The FBI put out documents back in 2011 about skinwalkers, but they were not taken seriously at all and were shut down before ever reaching mainstream media. These documents were leaked at some point, but are now almost impossible to find. The Navajo Nation Police Department, otherwise known as NNPD, was contacted for their take on the story, but no comment was made at the time of publication. Whatever the case may be, the NNPD is being very careful on what they choose to publicize and what they choose to respond to, trying to downplay any stories they are accused of. Two deputy sheriffs believe that they have seen a tall, dark figure just outside the city limits of Oceanside, California. They both stated that they were viewing this creature standing on the other side of an eight-foot-tall chain-link fence. The officers state they saw it moving its head back and forth, as if looking around at the area. This is when one of the deputies decides to go get his light for more illumination. When he returned, he says that whatever it was on the other side of the fence had moved off into some bushes out of sight range, leaving him with no idea of what he had just witnessed. Another sighting comes from two teenagers who were driving alongside Beach Boulevard in Oceanside on the 14th. They spotted what they thought was a bear on the side of the road, but this soon proved to be incorrect. One of the teens stated that he got out his light, shined it at the thing only to find that there were no eyes. This is when they both ran back to their car, and took off in fear, not wanting to see any more. During November of 2012, 
there had also been numerous UFO sightings all across California. Could these so-called sightings be related somehow? People are always reporting strange lights over cities here in America. What makes these reports any different? What do you think about all these weird happenings taking place today? Is this some sort of warning or sign for humans? Or are people simply making these up because we're desperate for attention? They went on to mention that there were several people that had filed reports of tall, dark figures in the area. They also stated that they were not sure if these incidents were connected, but it seems highly possible since they occurred on the same day. Now, our final report comes from yet another deputy from Graham County, Arizona. He states that while he was on duty around 3 in the morning, he heard a very strange noise coming from outside this location. When he went to investigate what the sound could have been, he says there was a tall, dark figure standing out there in front of him, near an old abandoned meat facility. What makes this sighting even more interesting is that this site was surrounded by open fields and little else. There is no way possible for somebody to hide out there. So, what was this thing doing, just standing there, staring at the deputy? When asked why he didn't do anything to apprehend it, or even fire upon it, he said that he felt paralyzed with fear. He claims that his mind was telling him one thing, but his body would simply not listen. This is when he went back inside the building, calling for backup. When other deputies arrived on location, they could find no sign of any type of activity taking place. There were also no footprints found near the fence line or anywhere else throughout the dirt road leading up to where this creature had been seen standing. Imagine living in a world where you fear everything around you. You never know if something is lurking in the shadows or waiting for its next victim. Those are the people who have to live with this kind of anxiety all the time. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live in a world where every dark corner could hold some unseen danger. What if there was something out there that was watching your every move, hiding when needed, only to return once again when you least expect it to strike without any warning? These are just some questions that many individuals could ask themselves whenever they hear stories about strange sightings taking place somewhere in or near their own city. Every day, somebody else is coming forward claiming, too, that they have seen something out of this world, or not quite human in appearance. Whether these claims are true or not is anybody's guess at this point. But, what if one day, whatever is hiding in those shadows decides that we are not the ones who should be living on this planet anymore? That is a very deep and creepy thought to ponder about during one's downtime. Hopefully, these stories of strange encounters will just turn out to be lurking in the shadows, and not actually be true. In 2013, Officer Torg managed to secure an actual live DNA sample from a livestock kill while investigating the supposed Lizard Man case out in Bishopville, South Carolina. 8.01 a.m. He had responded to several calls of a large unknown predator supposedly killing livestock, to which he promptly responded. Upon arriving and following standard protocol for such a call, he quickly realized the severity of the situation establishing a perimeter around the kill site to keep onlookers away. 8.20 a.m. Torg obtained saliva from an unknown source on one of the cattle. He reported that it was not possible to tell if it was human or animal. 9.30 a.m. All evidence had been gathered and moved to evidence room waiting analysis. Officer Torg will have DNA results in approximately three weeks, he was told. As always, we strongly urge anybody with information regarding this incident to please report to your local authorities immediately so these investigations can be taken care of under proper jurisdiction. Two young men also reportedly saw what they described as a lizard man along a very rural road in eastern South Carolina Sunday night. According to reports, two 19-year-old men were driving along a stretch of highway near Bishopville and they came upon something in the road. They turned around and saw what they described as a seven-foot-tall lizard man and quickly drove off. When asked further for comment, they both said this was no man in a costume, that this was a real-life lizard man and must have been the same one seen back in the 80s by the young man who had his own sighting in Skateboar Swamp in 1984. Now, 
2002. I had just responded to a call outside of Glendale, Rhode Island. We were called to the area because a hunter had been chased by what he believed was a large bat humanoid. Its face and eyes looked like a ball about two inches across, very bright and seemed to be grinning at him, full of sharp teeth. The wings did not flap, but somehow glided away from the man who was still standing in amazement at what he just saw. It flew off into the trees and never came back out. I searched for over an hour, trying to find this creature without success. I heard no other sightings since then. Either there is a bit of hunting that goes on in the area throughout the year. Officer B, who will remain anonymous for this report, indicates that it wasn't something that could have easily been explained. They are very hesitant to share their full encounter due to ridicule. He did, however, describe the creature and did not indicate that it did not seem to be something that could have easily been misidentified as any known animal. Officer B has also indicated that there was also a constant stream of hunters in this area during his time of search, but no other reports were noted for this specific area at the time. He did state that he had heard stories from other officers regarding strange sightings and experiences with various large bat-like creatures all around Glendale, Rhode Island. Over the course of several years, dating back prior to 2002. Of note, Officer B has indicated that they are considered by some members of law enforcement as reliable witnesses due to their hard-earned reputation for truthful reporting of facts associated with their profession. This creature's sighting remains unexplained. Officer B stated that he has seen other reports in the area and has indicated similar sightings in the general area, though no other locations in Glendale match these reports. There is also note that a man by the name of John Bagleary was doing some work in a cemetery in Glendale. He claims to have seen a large creature in one section of the cemetery back in 1994. He described it as demonic, tall, black, with large wings, he claimed that it flew directly over his head. He believes it came from a portal from hell. He equates its size to be roughly eight feet tall if standing Though this report isn't specific to Glendale, I did extensive research for any type of flying humanoid report from all around the area, and only three, including Officer B's sightings, popped up. All other similar sightings I located were across the country, not limited to southern New England. Officer B later sent me an email indicating that there have been other strange incidents prior to his own sighting. Two years previously, a local youth had been severely mauled by something he described as a big hairy thing with wings. No other reports came out from the area regarding the incident. The boy was never interviewed or heard from again. Although, I think a large part of that is the media jumping in to shut that down before the public got word and began to mass panic. Officer B indicated that it appeared to him that law enforcement was trying their best not to mention the incident to the public. At one point or another, Government officials had stepped in and took control over the case. Officer B had also contacted me later, indicating that he had also spoken to a retired officer. They said they were involved in an incident where one of their colleagues was attacked by something very large and unidentified. This was after responding to a call in the same general vicinity. This is likely what led them to investigate further when they received the initial hunter's report. I'm aware of several areas across New England and the world that have, on occasion, had incidents like these. There's usually some kind of game or animal to blame, though what is described by Officer B doesn't appear to be anything like an owl or other known species of flying animal. As always, I welcome any further information regarding this type of report. If you have experienced similar events, feel free to contact me. I am also looking for input from individuals who are interested in real research and would enjoy being involved with a group working together on finding explanations for currently unexplained mysteries across New England and beyond. Officer B, whose name will be kept confidential to protect their employment and identity status, also indicated that immediately following the sightings, there had been government officials reporting the same thing, documented as looking like a big person with wings. Other than a few hunters who claim they've seen something large and unidentified flying around at night, nothing has been said about the incident. 
it is assumed that law enforcement will follow up with further investigation if they can confirm something was actually sighted that evening near Glendale. But, since we are relying largely on bureaucracy, I wouldn't hold my breath. In this report, a group of five police officers all heard a very loud scream in the distance. One officer immediately identified it as a cougar, but when they got to investigate, they found no such cougar existed in the whole area. They know it was not a human due to its volume and inhuman nature. Second and third interviews with Gregory Riddle in this report. The witness talks about seeing an unknown animal twice from his car while driving down a road at night. He quickly gets out there after seeing the animal on both occasions. He knows something is off about it. It gives him chills just looking at it. This report also has some good information within the first interview where the only witness discusses other cryptids that he has seen before. This is not the only sighting but it has affected his way of thinking. Here is the first interview. January 27th, 2012. I want to report a cryptid that was seen in the vicinity of Maine on October 5th, 2010. This was around 9.35 p.m. by myself and one other person. The creature was about eight and a half feet tall or more, white or light in color. No skin, no hair, it looked almost skeletal, or as I would call, mummified. It looked very large, standing up straight. It was walking upright when we first saw it. We only caught sight of it through our headlights when we were driving on a two-lane road right where it crossed onto another smaller road. It had been walking along the edge of the woods, disappearing into them after we saw it, before we could really get out and get a good look at it. We did not see its face or hands at this point, since it moved so quickly. We turned off our headlights and stopped near and we lost sight of it. We could not see anything in front of us with our high beams on anyway. It surprised me when I'm driving at night with my high beams on. Nothing is too bright for me to see. Even deer standing in the middle of the road or other cars coming from behind. I told my friend that there was something big in front of us to slow down and watch for it. After we stopped, turned off our headlights we could see that there was something in the road about a hundred feet away from us, but could not tell what it was due to the snow on the ground and making everything appear darker than usual. It's really hard to explain. We sat there looking at it while my friend backed up slowly. It was still standing there when he had to put enough distance between us so it could not see us anymore. As I mentioned, this thing looked like a large mummified skeleton it was easily the creepiest, most closest thing to Night of the Living Dead you can ever imagine. But it looked far more animalistic than just some huge human skeleton walking around. Either way, the whole incident took less than a couple minutes until it passed. The other interviews included in this report have been since whited out and unfortunately am unable to be included in this database. Thank you for your understanding. I will be telling you what I saw and heard while on duty in the evening of Thursday, July 15th, 2004. I was dispatched to an area. There had been reports of a lot of screaming. Once arriving at the scene, I am met with two other officers, who we will refer to as A and B. We proceeded into a wooded area that led out onto a street near a housing development. It was from that same location that we had heard these crazy yelling screaming coming from behind us in the woods just off the side of the street. They were very loud, very high-pitched. There were some lower pitches mixed in there as well. I have never heard anything like this before since being on duty here in Plymouth County. Since my partner and I were the only ones who actually heard this, we talked about it. Both of us think that we'd heard some type of Bigfoot-like creature. While not necessarily believers, we like to say we keep our options open. We had officers see with us as well, but he never heard the screams or anything else. One other thing I'd like to add is there were no residences on the street at the time. Nothing back off the road when we first came out into the woods. There were no vehicles either. This whole area has been developed since then, though there are a few houses now back off the street where we first came out on. The noise we heard down in those woods could be best described as a long scream or yell 
mixed with a howl and growl. It sent chills down my spine that night, even as a trained law enforcement official. I never saw anything like this before, and I have not seen or heard it since either. I do hope that one day, I will see something like that again. I know there are certain things out there we cannot explain, and that's what makes it all the more intriguing. It should also be included that Officer A had a previous sighting of the same type of size of creature back in the early 90s. It might have been 91 or 92. I actually spoke with him about it. He described to me what he saw. It was very similar to the way I would describe our screams that evening. The most striking thing was that his, he just stated that it stood there staring at him for almost 10 minutes. Or so he said it felt like it, but it was probably only 30 seconds. Again, all this took place out in Plymouth County. In 1981, an officer claims that he was on patrol with another officer. They received a call about something large in a wooded area of Sand Ridge State Forest. When they went to investigate, lo and behold, they saw what appeared to be a hair-covered man standing on two legs, watching them from about 200 feet away. The creature quickly ran off into the woods before either could get a good look at it. But both stated it looked like something out of this world. The following is an excerpt from the witness's report about what happened. As we pulled up, it walked on two legs until reaching a tree, then knelt down behind it, rose up back on two legs, and continued staring at us. Officer Odia got out of the car, rifle in hand. I got out, putting my spare revolver in my waistband, pulling out my shotgun from its bracket under the dash. We both walked to the front of the cruiser, each taking a side scanning for it, when Odia said loudly, There it is. I didn't see anything, so shouted where. He told me where it was behind a tree, about 45 yards away, crouched down, watching us. He instructed me to stay back while he approached it for a better look. Odia stated that he watched as this thing kept looking left and right, making sure nobody else was coming. Once satisfied that they were alone, it began running back towards us. That's when I took my first shot at it with my 12 gauge. It was just beginning to rise up though, so all that happened was Buckshot spring into the tree behind it. Odia then grabbed me, told me to follow him back to the car. Once we got back in the car, he told me we needed to leave now. It was very dark, but still light enough for us to see. This thing was hideous. Odia has since passed away. Before he died, though, he wanted to come out and get this story for all these years. I just never knew how or what the right time was. Most people have a hard time believing that policemen would not take into account shooting an unknown cryptid. However, when working with Odia, he claimed he would never shoot and kill a Bigfoot because there was simply too much paperwork. One of the scariest things about this whole incident is that whatever these officers saw, something using intelligence as well as somehow knowing when other people are coming. Police officers from Beaver Township, Ohio, report a bizarre bipedal creature that they witnessed in the early morning hours. On October 25th, 2018, at around 5.03 in the morning, four separate police officers from Beaver Police Department all had a terrifying encounter with an unknown bipedal creature. Investigators were on patrol, driving down an isolated road, known as Davis Road. They noticed something strange near the edge of the road, pulled up to see what it was. Out of nowhere, a large man-like figure appeared and stood about seven feet tall, so close to the car they could have reached out and touched him. The officers described seeing features like a very elongated bony face, huge fangs sticking out of its mouth, and black eyes, akin to that of a shark's. Prior to the sighting, the officers noticed something moving along one of the roads in their line of sight, but they weren't exactly sure what it was. Their curiosity got the best of them, so they decided to investigate. When they reached where it had been spotted, all four officers were able to see the creature in full view. They described it being so close that if it wanted to, this thing looked like it was going to jump out at them. One of them said, It was like nothing I've ever seen before, while the other officers agreed with him. According to one officer who did not want to go on camera about what he saw that morning, 
he knew immediately that it was not a bear or any type of person or thing. He also said it only took seconds for their eyes to adjust and see exactly what he was witnessing. It seemed as if this creature had its own light source, being able to be easily spotted as well. This is some strange stuff. Weird places are all out there. And to add to their statements, after it had disappeared into the nearby bush, two of the officers left their posts to join other two to make the group and investigate. They came up with nothing, except a large hoof mark in the area where they found some broken bones, among other things. They told me that I can't find any evidence of that myself. It would have been on the news if it was proof. And they informed me that there will never be evidence for such things like this, and that if it ever got on the news, it would be very quickly retracted. I was a young highway patrol officer patrolling the highways of Maryland. It must have been around 2 or 3 in the morning. I was driving on Interstate 95, closing up towards Baltimore. The speed limit in that section of highway is 65 miles an hour. I would always patrol between the two left lanes so people could see my lights and not get too comfortable driving 20 over the speed limit. As I came up to where 695 splits off from 95 northbound, heading towards Fullerton, there was this dark figure standing in the right lane ahead of me. It looked like a person, but it did not move at all. It just stood there next to the barrier wall, separating the right lane from the exit ramp for Fullerton Avenue North, coming out of Philly. So naturally, I sped up slowly to catch up with this person, thinking they must be injured or something. As I get closer, still maintaining the speed limit, or just under, this thing turns its head to look at me head on, and I notice it has two glowing red eyes in the center of its face. It was very intense and terrifying, but what struck me most was its teeth. This thing had fangs like a wolf or bear, very sharp edges protruding out of its mouth. Its whole demeanor was extremely menacing. It did not look human at all, but when it turned around and stared right at me, I slammed on my brakes in sheer terror. I managed to get myself together after a couple of seconds, speeding away, hoping not to lose control of my car and wreck. Ironically, I heard radio communications from another officer about ten minutes later that a driver up the road had witnessed an upright, decaying animal running across the road. It was as if it had been hit by a car and left a trail of blood on the pavement for about 50 yards before completely disappearing from sight, crossing into another street. I'm not sure what this thing is, but I've never seen anything like it. Not my story, but one my family has shared with me as they are close with one of our fellow reservation officers. My uncle, a police officer on the Navajo reservation, was out in his squad car patrolling the area when he comes across something moving in the shadows of the mesa. He slowed down to get a better look at what was out during patrol hours, and what emerged from the shadows was not any kind of animal my family has seen before. It stood on its hind legs just like a man, but its body resembled that of a canine. It had long arms that dragged along the ground as it walked towards my uncle's patrol vehicle. The strangest part about this creature were its eyes. They were just these large yellow orbs, and they glowed in the complete darkness, with no additional light sources around. My uncle described these orbs similar to headlights while looking at them head on. At first, he thought he might have come across some sort of demon, so he quickly checked his weapons, firing at this creature. The gunfire did nothing to stop this thing's progression, it continued its steady march towards my uncle, unfazed by blunt force or loss of blood. It took several more shots until the creature slumped over and disappeared from view in a cloud of dust. My uncle got out of his car cautiously, gun drawn but could find no sign of the thing he had tried to kill. Only some large canine tracks leading back up onto the mesa where it stood before, continuing into a cave that supposedly had been closed off for safety reasons due to a large rock slide decades ago. He continued his search, 
but found nothing. The next day, my uncle went back to the area and noticed a small patch of gravel where he had shot at this creature. The only explanation for this is that the thing dragged out the rocks from its chest and took them back with it to its den, in order to use these rocks to somehow patch itself up. As of now, my uncle has since been suspended from his job for misconduct due to firing his weapon without authorization while on duty. He claims he saw a skinwalker, and I believe him, especially after what happened in New Mexico. Even if there isn't much we can do about it now, they're practically extinct. If you read this, please help us by getting rid of all these things before everybody starts trying to go out and find these things themselves. The world needs much less of these creatures, not more of them. This evening, I'm going to be telling you about a sighting that I had back in July while working the night shift. It was just me and my partner that night. We were going around the highway right around 11 p.m., but as it turns out, our second call came in the day right around 10.40 p.m. In Ohio State Highway Patrol jurisdiction, there is no set speed limits on any roads except the turnpike and a few other select highways. So, when we get calls to investigate speeders, we have to find probable causes that somebody is going above the posted speed limit. Now, it was about 10.45, and I see a car passing from behind at seemingly high speeds. I didn't think much of it at first, but when I noticed the brake lights turning on and off, at first I thought somebody was just messing around, but then it became apparent this guy was trying to warn me. I turned on my lights and siren and immediately got behind this person. We were driving into a heavily forested area, so there were no lights, and it wasn't until I turned my spotlight on that I was able to see what he was trying to warn me about. There was a humanoid figure standing in the middle of the road. It appeared to be wearing all white, like robes, and it did not move at all, just standing still in the road. The reason I knew this person had to have seen this thing is that he too pulled over right into the closest shoulder as soon as he approached this thing. I get out of my car and shine my light onto this person, and it immediately sprints off into the trees, like some sort of wild animal yet completely unhuman. Despite how quickly it moved, it made no noise running or running through the brush. My partner comes up behind me asking if I saw what he saw, and I responded with, yeah, I did, in a very uneasy tone, despite being unable to explain what it was that I had just seen. All I can think about was getting back in our car and driving away. The other officer asked me if I wanted him to go in after it, so we could at least figure out what kind of animal it might have been. But the fact that this thing wasn't making any noise while running kind of gave me the feeling that whatever was running through those woods knew exactly where it was going, which led me to believe that chasing after it would likely be trying to catch a ghost. We didn't see anything else throughout our shift, besides some drunk drivers and people purposely not wearing their seatbelts. All in all, another uneventful night besides this. I've received many strange, bizarre calls as an officer. This is one of them. The call came in as a woman, reporting to the police that she had heard and seen a large dog trying to break into her home. She sounded frantic, it told me she saw the creature trying to get in through her door several times before dialing 911. The dispatcher asked if the animal was actually inside her home. She told us no. The dispatcher asked if this thing was trying to get inside of her house. She said yes, and told the dispatcher that this was a large, vicious dog, larger than any dog she'd ever seen before. This continued on for several minutes, until I finally arrived on the scene. I got out of my car, and walked towards the house, flashlight in hand and ready for anything. Then I knocked on the front door. I waited several seconds, and there was no response. I knocked again, still nothing. So I walked around the back of her home to see if she had gotten out another exit or entrance. I didn't want to break down her door. Maybe she wasn't in danger after all. About halfway up the driveway at the side of her house, I noticed 
a large missing section of fence that looked to be torn down, leading right off to the woods and the property next door. Then it occurred to me, there were also large canine tracks that led over this fence, right in the dirt leading up to the house. As I crouched down, shined my flashlight, and began trying to investigate, I saw something that will haunt me forever. Growling at me from less than 20 feet away was a snarling, wolf-like creature standing on two legs, right by the tree line, leading off into the woods. This creature lowered its head and growled, and then jumped off quickly into the darkness of the forest. I had my gun drawn and ready, and as this thing disappeared and I kept my gun focused, two men appeared on the property whom I did not recognize. They were not fellow officers. They told me they were related to the woman inside, and they both had firearms drawn, but kept them by their side. I asked them if they knew what was going on. They both looked at me like I had two heads. The one guy said, You don't know. The second man just nodded toward the creature, whispering something. He began to tell me that this home is being attacked by a strange creature, a same creature that also attacked his daughter while he was trying to get her home from school just weeks ago. They were kind of like an unofficial band of men who were trying to track down this creature. He also informed me they had been tracking this beast for weeks, after it killed several livestock in another rural area. I began to inform him about animal control, but he said that they had already done so, and they did not believe us. And then he showed me photos of his wife's injuries after this beast tried to kill her in cold blood. That photo will stay with me. His photo was of his wife, laying on an emergency room table, fresh stitches all across her right side, face, and neck, and also needing her jaw wired shut due to nearly being bitten off by this thing. Immediately, both men's attention went right towards the woods where this creature disappeared. Both drawing the firearm, the one man with the photo began shooting several times, and just then we could hear the growling. And just there, faintly beyond the light of the house in the darkness, was this creature again. I've been trying to figure out what I was looking at. Werewolves aren't real. What else could this thing be if it's not a werewolf? Was this thing possibly some kind of mutation? Or maybe some sort of lab experiment? I don't know. But it kind of vanished again in the woods. And things seemed to calm down that night. I took the names and numbers of the two gentlemen who seemed to want to help and let me know if there's any things I could share with them to help track down this strange creature. The woman inside the house refused to speak to me or even come out and acknowledge my presence. I think she was so frightened by what had just happened. Personally, I have no explanations for any of this. I just know that it was a very, very strange call and a very strange night. Normally, I get off work right around 10 p.m. This was at night when I saw this. I'm also going to leave my name out of this, just in case it could hurt my law enforcement credentials. I don't know what I saw, but it was some sort of canine. I was driving down an isolated road that leads to one house on the other side of the hill. I haven't seen any cars or people on this road. It's more of a way for me to get home quicker without having to go all the way around by using this nifty shortcut. But as I'm coming up the hill on my way home, something in the middle of the road catches my eye. Well, it was more so on the side of the road, trying to make its way towards the middle. Before I even have time to think about stopping or barely swerving, whatever it was was already up against my car with its front paws and claws up against the hood. This thing was huge I slammed on my gas pedal, hoping it would get out of the way, but I began hearing this low rumbling noise, like this dog growling at me. So I got out of there, fast. This thing went down on all fours, from two, and was now running alongside my car for a little bit, before dropping back down behind me, disappearing into the darkness. Everything about this thing was huge. I can't get over it. It had massive legs and were just big. The entire body was big. Its head was huge. It had a very long snout and pointed ears. 
It looked kind of like a wolf, but different. The largest wolf I've ever seen. And those eyes. Its eyes were from a whole other world. They were bright red. Thanks for listening to my story. Feel free to share it if you'd like, as long as you keep my name out of it. I had just finished my shift and was on my current way home. I had stopped off at Wendy's to grab a quick bite to eat. It was right around midnight, so the drive through was pretty dead. As I went through the line, I saw this thing just standing there, watching me from across the parking lot. Not sure what it was, but it looked really tall and skinny, with gangly arms and legs hanging out. It gave me this very uneasy feeling and I watched it as it turned and walked away over to some shrubbery behind one of those big light poles by the parking lot exit and entrance. I tried not to think too much of it and just drove away. There's just something about what I saw that still really spooked me. I feel very unsettled in my stomach just thinking back to it. As I was getting home from work, I was still shaken up and could not stop thinking about what I saw. So I decided to show my son and daughter, 8 and 10, who were getting ready for bed about what had rattled me so badly. Not that I could actually show them, but at least tell them. My kids kind of just looked at me like I was crazy, but being kids, I found they would believe me a lot more than my wife would. Then they started telling me about Slender Man, which sounds like it might be what I saw, but I don't know any of these creepypasta characters kids watch nowadays. Could you kindly give me any information on what do you think I saw? And was this paranormal or not? It's one of those nights that I can never forget. I was dispatched to a call about an erratic driver, but it sounded like the call was taken by mistake. There wasn't any description other than suspect operating vehicle erratically, so I figured it must have been for somebody else. When I got up to the area, though, there he was the suspect himself driving down the road as if nothing had happened. I pulled out after him, trying to get his attention with my sirens and lights, but he didn't budge. Not at all until almost half a mile later when he finally moved over into the right lane, stopped on the shoulder facing me head on. He sat there in his car completely still. I got out of my car with my flashlight and shone it on him. His expression was blank like he didn't even see me there in front of his car. I didn't want to make any sudden movements in case this guy was dangerous, but at the same time, I felt like he wasn't going to do anything because he stopped himself. So, I took a few slow steps toward him while my other hand hitched over to where my firearm was kept, just behind the small of my back inside a cross straw holster. He still made no movement whatsoever, so I took another step forward, and then thought, this might be the only chance I get. I jump into his vehicle through the open window, put one hand on his shoulder and another on his head. I try to pull him out through the window, but it's like he was stuck, like he was glued there. He didn't even try to resist or anything. Then I saw it, this massive gash on the side of his chest, like something straight out of a horror movie. It was deep too, right down to the very bone. Lacerated flesh, flapping in the wind against the jagged edges of exposed ribs, as if somebody had just hacked into him with an axe. It wasn't bleeding, though. In fact, the blood seemed coagulated. It made me think, is he not human at all? There were no other injuries anywhere else on his body, either, so it didn't appear to be from some kind of accident. I left the guy sitting there because he was completely unresponsive, but I couldn't find any signs of blood. There were definitely marks on his body, though they all pointed to the same thing. He had clearly been in some sort of hostile situation. I just called this in as a hit and run, left the car where it was and tried to follow it. I called in an ambulance to get him medical attention. When the ambulance showed up, they too were shocked by his state and surprised by the fact that he was not dead. Although in checking his vitals, his temperature was 70 degrees and his blood flow 
seemed to not be really going much at all, meaning he had very low blood pressure, and his heartbeat was abnormally low. But he was still clearly alive, enough to operate a vehicle. Talk about disturbing. It still really bothers me when thinking back. I mean, how often does this sort of thing happen? And seeing something like that, it really just sticks with you. It's very haunting. My name is Officer T. Williamson, and I am currently an officer in a small town east of Phoenix, Arizona. My encounter involves an online report that I had read from a man who goes by the name of Ken. The report detailed how he and his family have been being harassed by what they believe to be a demon for almost three years now. Mr. Ken begins the report by describing the very first encounter he had with this evil entity, which occurred back in the fall of 2013 at their home in Arizona, while nobody else was around except for his wife, who at the time was taking a shower. He explains that out of nowhere, he hears her scream from upstairs, so he runs up there to see what's wrong, only to find her standing there frozen with terror, written all over her face, staring into the nothingness. When he asked her what was wrong, she described a tall, dark figure standing in the corner of their bedroom, right outside of their bathroom door. Mr. Ken claims that when he looked in the same corner, all he saw was a pitch black void where the figure had been standing, which caused this intense feeling of dread to come over him, made him feel as if death were staring him into his very soul. He told his wife there's nothing there, let her out of the bathroom for fear of her safety after she clearly voiced concern about going back into the room and with it still being very present. She had a hard time even going back in there and just turning off the shower. Ken then explains how throughout the next three years, this entity would go on to harass the family, manifesting in just about a different form every night. Whether it be the same dark figure or sometimes this evil-looking gnome creature with red eyes. And another time, he claims it appeared as a spirit made of pure fire. He said that although nothing ever physically happened to anybody within the house, everyone has experienced scratch marks, cuts, bruising, all over their bodies for no real reason at all, all happening at separate times. Ken too claims that whatever this thing is loves to stand outside the bathroom door while people are showering and appears to be immune to things like crosses or crucifixes, or even holy water. Going deeper into the report that I read, it didn't go into too much more detail about this entity, but from what Ken did say, it sounded like this was a type of spirit that takes on the form it believes will frighten its victim the most. A shape-shifting spirit. That being said, if Ken's family has been dealing with one for almost three years... I would say they have done very well in keeping whatever this thing was harassing them away from harming anybody. I'm not sure why this thing chose to show itself now after all these years, but maybe something happened recently to make it think attacking them might be possible. And it also makes me wonder whether or not whoever wrote this report actually recorded everything their demon did throughout all the years and left that stuff out when writing about it just in case anybody reading it decided to call them out on their story. I don't think what Ken has been experiencing was either a demon or a bogart, but an entity that he and his family unintentionally invoked by possibly playing around with some kind of occult paraphernalia, which caused a ritualistic nightmare spirit to cross over from the spirit realm into their home, which they then failed to send back. If this really did go on for three years straight, I would say whatever is going on with their house definitely falls under the paranormal category, instead of something rational, like waking up at night and scratching yourself with your eyes still closed because you were dreaming about scratching yourself, when in reality, you were just moving around in your sleep due to maybe a medical condition or maybe even suffering from sleep paralysis. Sometimes, you just have to take people who claim they are being harassed by something invisible with a grain of salt. I mean, even if it is real, there might just be some sort of logical explanation of what's going on that they possibly haven't thought of yet. 
I was on shift at the county jail and had just gotten off of a patrol shift. My shift was supposed to end at 10, but I did not get off until midnight due to some court hearings that had just gotten out. I figured that I would have to go get something to eat and then hit the showers before going home since it wasn't worth trying to sleep in a dirty uniform. When everything is said and done, I head down to the lobby so I can clock out and leave after grabbing something quick to eat. There's this big glass window right behind where they make you sign in. So if there's any issue or if we need an update when the day guys are coming in on shift, you can see all over the front desk through said window. I was about halfway through the lobby, my food already paid for and trying to pick up out on something, when I noticed something off in the corner window by the lockers where all of our gear is stored during shift changes. There's this big steel cabinet back there and is usually locked up pretty good, but is also sort of old. You can tell if somebody has opened it. It sticks a tiny bit at the hinges. Now, I've did more than my fair share of gear over my short career at this point, so I already know it's supposed to be in that closet, just by looking at it. There's two desks, backpacks, tactical vests, and even rifles on occasion. Well, when I saw the cabinet open, and the guns were over there, instead of over here, where they should have been, I got a little concerned. The guys at the front desk heard me asking, who was in the locker room? One of them came out to see what was wrong. He checked it out, completely confused by what he knew for a fact that nobody had come in since us day guys started clocking out at this time. We closed up shop, decided to head back down until we could figure things out. I would later find out that my other officers had seen a police officer they did not recognize in there moving things around, which would later we would know as the ghost. But luckily enough, my gun was still in its case, sitting on top of my locker, so if nothing else, nothing was missing for me, personally, which is a huge relief considering each gun gets locked up with its own special key, and there's only like six of those in the entire station. I was talking to one of the guys at the front desk about what I'd seen, the ghost, the apparition, but he did not remember anybody coming through for a while, so he went back down together to talk to the night watchman after all this happened. I guess he too has seen this apparition as well. It will come in and move things around. Everything from paperwork to equipment. And this is coming from somebody who doesn't believe in ghosts at all. But there's definitely something here. Now, our county jail is pretty small. Maybe around 40 cells if I had to guess. But it also has an upper level that houses some offices. And the conference room along with holding cells where you could put somebody before transfer or just until their court date. The lower floor houses two large interview rooms, six normal cell blocks, an infirmary that doubles as a psychiatric unit, and then our holding area for everybody else that needs to stay the night. I had gone up there with our main dispatcher and her assistant after talking to the guys at the front desk. Every single door was locked like they should have been. Aside from one solitary cell that houses an older woman, who'd been picked up for public intoxication just earlier that evening. That just made no sense whatsoever. Of course, unless she escaped. And I have no idea because it would take quite a struggle to break out of those doors, since we're talking about solid steel. The cells also have two deadbolts on top, both being locked, so you have to do three things prior to breaking through all of them, which is nearly impossible if unarmed or alone unless you can pick locks. The cops that were there at the time had gone through just about every inch of this place, coming up with virtually nothing, which is extremely strange. We're a very small team, and we could usually get a pretty good bead on these things before it gets too far. It was only the three of us after all, and we made sure to check out everything together in case something or somebody had slipped by. We even went over our entire walkie-talkie system just to make sure there was nothing going on. But we were also noticing we were having a lot of static issues, which is very unusual. The air felt a very electric -y. Lots of magnetism in the air. Again, very unusual. And from the watchman, he always explained how the air would seem to change every time he would see this thing on the cameras. This officer ghost. 
but after searching for what seemed like hours, we decided to head back down and see if maybe something else had popped up, or perhaps there'd be some kind of clue lying around, somewhere, that could explain all of this without having to call in everybody else just yet. It seemed that maybe this was an inside job. I'm also trying to think rationally here and not immediately go to ghosts. The only people who had access to that room were either on shift or had clocked out at this point. But it doesn't explain why somebody would take or move our stuff and then not bother using it for whatever they wanted to do with it. I don't know if you've ever worked with law enforcement before, but having guns missing is a really bad thing. If they fell into the wrong hands, there's literally nothing stopping them from being used against anybody, including our other officers. Our vests are also equipped with Kevlar plates, despite how light they may be, so those could seriously injure or even kill somebody, which, again, is an extreme risk, since most of us carry them around everywhere we go. I tried talking to the watchman again, who didn't remember anybody else coming in, but informed me that on camera, he saw the figure multiple times this evening. I just couldn't buy it, though. If you know anything about our tiny town, you might know we don't have a ton going on, especially at night, which is why most people end up getting bored and find crime to commit. Even officers have a struggle of keeping responsibility, or they can't handle the stress that comes on with law enforcement. I hate watering the idea of this entire thing down to a silly ghost or apparition, or even acknowledging the fact that this police station is haunted. But maybe it's time to open my mind. The night watchman, a good friend of mine, is a no-nonsense kind of guy. He wouldn't make this stuff up. I don't know if he really believes in ghosts, but he's definitely seeing something on the cameras that isn't quite human. I have family in law enforcement, and I found these old archive files. Well, my grandfather did, because he has access to documents. And this is an old printout of something that I found very interesting. So, I thought I would share it with you. Here you go. May 22nd, 1984. Officer LG was patrolling the area around a local park during the night shift. At approximately 1.25 a.m., the officer reported veering off course to investigate flashing lights in an adjacent wooded section of the city spotting several bright lights slowly hovering along the tree line. As he drove closer to investigate, his vehicle reportedly lost power and stalled as he approached an object described as having a dark body with many bright lights which hovered silently above him, roughly 300 feet. The object allegedly reeled out some type of thin black cord which struck and wrapped around his police car as it backed away from him, taking off into the air and disappearing into darkness. Officer LG wrote his account of the event on May 24, 1984. The following day, he reported the incident to command who denied anything had happened and insisted that his vehicle was in perfect working order. Officer LG's police cruiser was inspected by technicians at the city garage who found nothing wrong with it mechanically. No evidence of alterations or unusual damage were made Note, after inspection, no support for Officer LG's claim would come from local authorities until three months later when another officer, AF, called into dispatch reporting a very similar object near the same park along with reports of several other officers who had also spotted all lights descending toward a tree line, then vanishing without explanation. Thereafter, Officer AF Officer LG was reportedly ridiculed by command to stop spreading rumors, ultimately being permanently dismissed from duty. The officer involved in this story goes by the name of Officer Michael Frankton, currently stationed at the 14th Precinct. So, one night, about two months ago, he was sent to investigate a call of an animal trying to break into a house on the west side of town. The caller reported that they were not sure what it was, and that it looked like some sort of large skeletal animal. When he got there and searched around the perimeter, he found no tracks or trace or evidence that would suggest any person or animal had actually come close to entering 
or tearing into the property after entering into the home, which seemed completely normal. Everything was closed up and locked, as if nobody was there. He even searched all around inside, just to make sure nothing had gotten in. He exited the house and walked around to check the perimeter again before his radio started going off, notifying him that the officers had arrived on the east side of property, where he would be able to help them with an animal control call. When he approached them, he told them that there was this large creature that looked like it might have been injured, hence the skeleton exposure, and that this animal had possibly escaped and was injured, and now darting all over the property. They brought Officer F back around to where the animal was initially sighted. Right up ahead of them was what they could best describe as something straight out of hell itself. It seemed almost like a hulking mass of rotting flesh and bone, and had this terrible odor of rotting meat and death. In the officer's words himself, he said that this thing looked like a real-life horror movie prop from an undead movie, but was actually moving around. It had long arms and massive claws at the end of each finger. It was staring into their eyes with an abnormally large mouth split open, as if it was not trying to bear any of its teeth at all. The officers all fled the scene, while this being began running alongside the cruiser, trying to keep up with them. Any other information about this night was blotted out and classified. Little is known about what happened to Michael F., or his current whereabouts, or if he is even serving still as a police officer. If you would like your own police encounter stories to be featured on this post, please use the submission from available. We look forward to hearing more stories. Folks, I know this might be hard to believe, but it's what I've gone through. I had just finished up with a traffic stop one night where all I found was an expired registration on a car, which did not match the plates. So I let them off without warning went back to my cruiser to call in dispatch before returning to patrol. This being said, I should have been able to see everything in front of me as clear as day. Even though it was wintertime, and where all the trees had lost their leaves, so visibility shouldn't have been too much of an issue. My headlights illuminated almost anything within a hundred yards or so, but sometimes things can hide in the shadows of those yards. I noticed something out of my peripheral vision. This is right as I was on the phone with dispatch. So I immediately cut off dispatch and began slowly driving towards where I saw whatever it was, thinking it was a person up to no good. But then I saw that it moved slowly and had a long, fluid stride, despite having no leaves. It seemed to blend in with the surroundings enough that you could just barely make out what it looked like. And I saw a large head two long ears and horns, dark, deep eye sockets that appeared almost hollow, taken up by most of my headlights' illumination by this point. I felt like Alice chasing after whatever Alice chased after into Wonderland, except without all the trippiness and trying to find an exit. Except this time, it was the one chasing after me. I sped up a bit and tried to keep it in sight, but as I got closer, it suddenly crouched down, and I lost sight of it. The more I go into detail about this experience, the deeper things get. Just know that there is no car for it to have gotten into or jump over any fence. So, where did it go? Whatever it was. But as soon as you stop asking questions is when they get answered. So, I slowly circled around the same 100 yards again, searching for anything unusual with my high beams on on full illumination. It must have been hiding from me somehow. There was nothing except a few stray cats darting behind some trash cans on the other side of the street. I jumped some bushes and parked cars. Still nothing. So, I start to just go back on duty, probably looking like a crazy officer driving around aimlessly for no reason. But that's what we do sometimes in this job. You just never know when something is going to pop out. So better to be safe than sorry. I'm about halfway down the block towards my car, when suddenly, up ahead of me, which is now being obstructed by tall grass, I see it again. It had been crouched down again, but its head was now tilted upward at an angle directly towards me, and its mouth was wide open. There were no teeth visible that I could recall. 
and it did not appear to be making any sounds. It would only remain in that position for a few seconds. Then, it would slowly move from side to side before standing back up on its two legs. It was at least 10 yards away from me, so I did the sensible thing, which was to get back into my car, lock the doors. But it just stood there looking at me for a few seconds, until going back behind some other parked cars, trying to keep out of sight. I don't know what it wanted with me, but if you have watched any cop show or horror movie ever, you probably could have guessed what happened next. I got out of my vehicle, drew my firearm. I'm smart enough to realize that shooting them never works anyway. But as I was about to approach the spot where it had been standing, it suddenly appeared in front of me, stopped and stared at me. And dang it, this thing was fast. It did not make any noise but its wide open gaping mouth, which now I could see contained what looked like rows of jagged teeth, glistening with drool. Then it runs away from me again. I followed right behind it. At this point, I just really wanted to know what this thing was, so forget being scared. I probably should have just gone back into my car for that hour or two remaining of my shift, but there's a reason why they call that being stupid. Anyway, so I'm chasing after whatever it was, and I'm running pretty fast, but not jumping over anything. This thing was fast, like Usain Bolt fast. It did not even run in a straight line when it ran away from me. It would just kind of weave in and out of any obstacle in front of it, which consistently mostly of parked cars or trash at the time. But when you move so much while trying to evade capture, eventually you're going to fall down. Your legs can only take you so far before they get tired. That's what I think happened to this thing. It seemed to collapse on something that was invisible in my headlights, and then pulls itself back up, which I'm not sure if it tripped or why it collapsed. Maybe it was feigning death, I don't know. But as soon as it pulled itself back up, it runs into a nearby backyard. Which made sense, I mean, all the streets had been blocked off at this point. So I'm going chasing after it, through the same gate that is still wide open in the fence. And to my horror, I see another similar creature on my left, staring right at me, like an idiot, while not making any noise. It too was crouched down like something out of a prehistoric paleozoo exhibit. Its mouth agape, but I couldn't see any teeth, and I couldn't help but notice that this one had very large eyes, and much larger than the other one, almost like a child or a baby compared to an adult. And then another creature just took off running while I was still trying to figure out if this creature was real or not, or was I simply running after a nightmare. And then a smaller one jumps right in front of me, out of reaction, I shoot this one point blank in the chest several times, which my gun did not even seem to phase it. It kept on running towards me, and I panicked at this point, despite my training. I'm now thinking that this is some kind of demon. I did not even bother shooting at it again. The first few shots seemed to have no effect, so instead of wasting bullets, I pulled out my taser and tased whatever it was, expecting it to fall over but it did not even react. The taser did nothing. Unsure of what to do at this point, I do the only thing I know I can do. Run. This creature and the other two gave chase, following quickly behind each other. I made it back to my cruiser and flew out of there. And since this night, I have never seen or dealt with such a creature, but I believe that this was something that had come from deep in the pits of hell. And I know these things are very real. I'm 52 and have lived in the U.S. now for 12 years. Forgive me if my English isn't the best. It's not my first language. I lived in Puerto Rico most of my life and even served as law enforcement there for about eight years. I know what I saw, so here goes. I remember it being a Sunday night a couple days before the arrival of Hurricane Maria to the island. I was patrolling my tour alone. Everybody else was sent home early, and due to the approaching hurricane conditions. The weather that night wasn't anything special, and just very cloudy, with some rain. I had heard on multiple occasions about Chupacabra sightings in Puerto Rico, especially around the rainforest, 
which is right where I was during that time. One elderly neighbor lady said she had actually encountered one when she stayed late at work one night, apparently running out of gas. She claimed it looked like a small person with spikes all down its back, red glowing eyes and large fangs. She said it chased after her, and she had to get into her car and try to get away, even though she just barely had enough gas to do it. And just a fair warning, what I'm about to describe isn't pleasant, so be warned. It was around 1.30 a.m., and I just passed a local river when a thing walked right by the road. It actually popped its head up. It didn't even try to hide or anything. At first glance, I didn't know what it was, and I thought maybe it was a small animal. But as soon as it fully turned and looked into my headlights and hissed, you could see what it was. Chupacabra. Very skinny, spines down its back, large red eyes, very pale skin, and sharp teeth and fangs. It was the red eyes, though, that ultimately gave him away before I saw the rest of his body. Those eyes were so bright, they could pierce the darkness of the night, even through my headlights. This might sound silly to you, but at that point, I froze and felt something was wrong. Especially when he hissed at me, like some kind of rabid wild animal. Also, it's important to know that most Puerto Rican people are very religious. So if somebody is walking around out there and they see this thing, chances are they're going to think it's a demon or something from the realm of hell. There was no doubt about it in my mind that night that what I was seeing was a chupacabra. He disappeared soon after. This has been one of the most frightening experiences I've ever had on the job and I've never seen or heard of such a thing here in American soil. Thank you for taking the time to read. New York State is known for some pretty crazy things, from alligators in basements to criminals hiding behind trees. But I've had some pretty strange run-ins myself. I'll be telling you about my most interesting encounter yet. About a year ago, while on duty at a local town overnight for training, myself and another officer were dispatched to a local residence for a report of an elderly woman who went missing while hiking with her dog out on her own property. She was sitting on roughly 80 acres of land and couldn't have gotten far. The person reporting was her son. He said that she hadn't been there since later that afternoon when she set out with the dog towards the edge of the property right near the swamp area by their house. It would have been odd to just send two officers on such a call, but due to our small force size, we were using one car on solo nights to provide better coverage across town. Upon arriving on scene, we met with the son who let us down where his mother was last seen. He told us he found her phone by their mailbox, which appeared that she had talked to her son for a little while, but after setting out, had mentioned something about going towards the swamp, as there were some wildflowers that had bloomed this time of year. And this is why we had been dispatched as well. It also seemed like a good spot for bears, so we had to evaluate all the potential dangers. However, knowing how well populated our area was, not everybody always carried bear spray, but we did, so we could cover more ground efficiently and also ensure safely if we came across any potentially dangerous wildlife. We walked for about 30 minutes, following the path around to where I thought she may have gone towards. However, after walking for a little while longer, nothing turned up. We then decided to double pack and try walking along another path that branched off one of the ones we were walking on to see if that would turn up anything, any evidence at all that she had been here. While walking down this other path at first, it seemed like there was nothing out of the ordinary. But again, no sign of her dog or any tracks leading to the brush, either finishing or somewhere else. This is when I began getting nervous, because between myself and my partner, we could not find her or find any traces of her. Something must have happened to her since she left home earlier in the afternoon. As we kept going further and further, we began hearing odd noises in the distance. While I felt that we were safe at first, we both came to a sudden stop. These sounds were like nothing I've heard before, 
at least not on this side of the country. But it did not sound like any animal or person. I could not identify it. Did you hear that? My partner had said to me, as he looked towards the source of the howl. At this point, my heart was racing out of fear and curiosity, wanting more than anything for this night to end and for us to get back safely. I told him yes, as my hands began to tremble slightly from both nervousness and adrenaline. The hair on my arms were standing and raising. I felt goosebumps beginning to form. We then slowly began moving towards where the howl had come from. Both myself and my partner, keeping our flashlights out, just in case whatever made that noise was anything dangerous. We walked for another minute or so, until we got closer and closer. Still no sign of any dog tracks or even footprints. Nothing leading up to this noise or away from it. My heart began pounding out of my chest when we came within about 30 feet of the origin of the sound, which had stopped by now after hearing us get closer. And then suddenly, without warning, an odd orb-like light appeared not too far above our heads, making us feel instantly nauseous. What is that? I remember saying, as I raised my flashlight to see what it was. But then just as quickly as it appeared, it vanished. My partner and myself both looked towards where the light disappeared, after hearing a rustle from behind us, not too far away from where we were standing up until now. He whispered, that we needed to get out of here. This wasn't right. But his voice was quivered, which was strange and caught my attention. And this was a partner who was always very calm, no matter how scary or dangerous the situation was. We had been working together for years. However, this time he sounded scared, almost as if something else was out there other than us. We began walking back towards where we came from for a while, while well, I kept my light out in front of me, just to make sure nothing was going to jump out. All the while, we had been hearing strange sounds that sometimes sounded like a human, but not fully, at least not having the cadence of a person. It was more animalistic. He would ask me again if I heard that, and I told him yes. He was getting more and more scared, even though his exterior was seemingly calm. We slowly started walking back towards where we came from, where the sounds became louder and louder. This made it difficult to continue without completely freaking out on one another. Then, out of nowhere, the one sound that instantly made me stop in my tracks was the sound of some kind of human or cry from not too far away. He whispered, Shh, to me, as he looked at me with his eyes, almost piercing right through mine. Well, I couldn't tell what it was. Something compelled me to move forward so we could see what was making these strange sounds around us, which led us here in the first place. Wait, no, come back. We shouldn't be going out this far, he had explained to me. But even though he seemed very insistent about us going back the way we came from, I couldn't bring myself to stay quiet and just go while we could still hear all these strange noises where we were. So, while he was busy whispering to me about how we should leave, I began walking towards where it sounded like this noise was coming from, which only made him try and stop me even more. We both proceeded to go deeper into the woods, but the sound of whatever we had heard was now gone, and it was silence. In fact, the night itself was now silent. The crickets, all nightlife, had gone completely dead. But the inside of my mind was going crazy, trying to figure out what was going on. What were those strange cries and noises? What were the bright lights that appeared overhead? But here's one of the strange parts. At some point, him and I lost each other, which I don't know how it's even possible because we were walking within 5 to 10 feet of one another. I hear him whispering into his radio, trying to contact me, but our radio communication was very fizzy, and somehow we had gotten separated. Joe, come in. Joe, are you out there? He kept saying over and over again, as I could hear what he was saying, as if he was standing right next to me, even though we couldn't see each other at all. And as we're struggling in this disarray of a mess, this extremely bright white light shines from the sky, 
as if an asteroid had exploded up in the atmosphere, lighting up the entire night sky, enveloping me, and I assume my partner, in this white, consuming light. And the next thing you know, we're back at the front of the property, and it's morning time, with the sun rising, and the mom is sitting on her front porch with her dog, drinking coffee. She sees us and is immediately surprised. Me and my partner are kind of looking at each other, freaking out, trying to mentally comprehend everything and anything that has just happened, feeling ourselves and our own heads and bodies, making sure we're not dead or dreaming. What just happened? I remember asking. When the lady comes over to us and begins asking questions like, where did you guys come from? Why are you here? We began asking her questions in retort. Her name. Was she aware that she was missing? She seemed to have no knowledge of her ever missing. And when checking the date and time, it had been about 14 hours the following morning. My partner and I can both vouch for this happening. I'll spare you all the minute details. But long story short, after we had gotten separated by this very thick darkness, we were both enveloped in white light and somehow pushed through about 14 hours of time and also placed in the front of the property. At the time of this happening to us, it was roughly 8.36 p.m. at night and we were no more than three-fourths of a mile away from the house. The woman who had been reported missing also showed no signs of ever being hurt or recollection she was ever missing in the first place. We did not report this, as we have no logical way to explain anything that happened to us. My name is, well, you can call me Officer Brian. I work for a mid-sized police department in the outskirts of New York City. Myself and my partner have come across what we assume was a gugway while on patrol one night after being called to a persisting issue with teenagers at an old abandoned warehouse right near the woods. The incident happened about three years ago now, so some of the details are foggy, but I remember for the most part exactly how it went. My partner and I arrived at the old warehouse to be greeted by a decent-sized group of rowdy teenagers. They were apparently having some party in there, but it was pretty clear that they got freaked out when we showed up. Everybody fled. My partner insisted that we go inside to check it out, which I thought was dumb because there was no way I was going on that place. Once we became aware of the situation, we also left. Not a minute after we got onto the main road, did my partner get called to another call about an incident near a small farm outside of town. Before arriving, he told me that there had been a number of missing persons cases in all the nearby area. They were all adults. When we first arrived at the farmhouse, it was clear something really wrong had gone on there. The wife of the man who lived there was crying in the arms of a paramedic, and we were told by another officer there that she had discovered her husband's remains, his mangled corpse in the barn, when she opened it up to feed their pigs. I was disgusted and confused. I couldn't figure out how something so violent could happen with anybody. After getting escorted to the barn, I couldn't believe how wrong I was. The man who lived there was a pretty big guy in his mid-fifties, and the way he looked now made me wonder if he put up a fight at all. He was badly mangled. I won't get into the details other than his spine sticking out and his head twisted around. I had a difficult time getting a hold of myself while trying to talk to the wife of this man who was mutilated right there. After prying with some questions, she eventually revealed that her husband went to check out on some pigs earlier in the night, but never came back. I wondered if he was taken or eaten by his pigs, since they were acting very strange. I knew deep down, though, that this wasn't done from a pig. This was from something else. I asked her what made her go out there, and she said it was because she heard snarling noises, and it sounded very out of place. Her husband had not come back either. She went on to say that she had heard these sounds before, but never paid much attention to them, that she had been hearing them a few days prior to this going on. I took her inside after convincing her I was sure everything would be fine. Meanwhile, my partner stayed behind with the other officers 
and assessed the scene while also having a look around the area for anybody or anything that could have had a connection or cause to this incident. One thing that really bothered me was that none of the other officers seemed to be concerned with the noises that I had heard. They didn't think it was connected to the man's death, but I knew better than anybody how violent and strange this was. I couldn't shake off what his wife had said about hearing those noises. This was the only thing I needed to keep looking into this. No one believed me. They said I was too new and didn't really know what I was doing. I'm still extremely disturbed by this whole incident. If you have any information on what happened, or think you might know, I would love to hear your opinion. Greetings. I hate to be a bother, but I have a story to tell. Please, do not think my mind is going from the many stories you all hear. Bear with me that this is very hard for me to do, although I believe it needs to be said. Last summer, on July 4th, 2017, around 10 p.m. at night, I was driving home from my family cookout late at night. I was also off duty. It was about 11 p.m. near the swamps by this point, and I live in Gulfport, Mississippi. What I saw a figure up ahead on the side of the road caught my attention. As I got closer, what I thought was a normal man, I soon realized that this was not the case. It stood over eight feet tall, long legs and arms that reached down below its knees. It had dark scales all over its body, but most notable were its hands, which hosted four fingers, each with long claws. The most bizarre thing, though, was its head, which appeared more like an iguana or a dinosaur than a human being. Upon seeing this strange creature, I slammed on my brakes in total shock, not knowing what to make of what I was looking at. It didn't take long, though, before it became aware of my presence, as it quickly turned its head looking directly at me, glowing yellow eyes and some sort of light that seemed to emit from within its skull. It then began walking towards my vehicle, as if trying to scare me or intimidate me to leave. In a panic, I reached for my gun, which was on the seat next to me, quickly aiming it at the creature's head, not knowing if shooting this thing would kill it or not, but wanting to stop whatever this thing was, in hopes it would just leave. As soon as I took aim, this thing let out a nasty growl and came rushing at me with great speed. Seeing this thing moving so quick, I was overwhelmed with fear, slamming my foot on the gas as fast as I could. The last thing I remember is seeing in my rearview mirror if it was going to give chase, but instead it just turned around and kept going back into the marsh. I don't know how long it took me to get home that night, but all I knew is at the time, whatever the creature was, Satan himself couldn't have been any more evil looking. I went home immediately after, told my family what had happened. Of course, my wife, they didn't believe a word of it. There were no tracks or anything else to prove the encounter ever happened. However, about a week went by, and I could swear I smelt that same deathly stench coming from the swamps when I drove by again, but no sign of it, so I just dismissed it all thinking it was a trick being played by my mind. I've watched a couple of your encounters on your YouTube, hoping to find any proof of anything that might explain what happened to me that night. But after a while, you just learn to let it go. Until this past spring, when one of our own deputies told me he had an encounter with one of these creatures in the swamps, himself, back in 2015. He said that he had seen something covered in mud, running through the brush, trying to hide, only then to turn its head at him before turning around and disappearing into thin air. He also said that shortly after seeing whatever this thing was, his cruiser's engine gave out along with metal bending and that he had to have the thing towed back into town. I don't know if there's any truth to what we saw, but I'm not taking my chances and will pray every night before going to sleep for the Lord and Savior to keep me safe from whatever we might have encountered out there in the swamps. I was a beat officer for a small town in northern New Jersey, the chief of police at the time was a guy well known to me and my brothers in the force as Mr. Paranoid himself. One night, 
I responded to a call from dispatch that there had been reports of screaming from the woods near Greenwood Lake. I arrived at the location and didn't see anything, but a foul smell hung in the air. It smelled like blood and wet dog and iron. I entered the woods on foot with my flashlight, ready to catch any pranksters or anybody who was fooling around, listening intently for any sign of life as I made my way deeper in the woods. Something suddenly darted out from a clump of trees to my right, tearing off into the woods. I chased after them, or it, as best I could, but there's no way I could ever catch up to them. A few weeks later, a young boy had gone missing from his family's campsite around the same location. The search party had come up empty-handed, but I knew that area was where I had seen whatever it was that night, what I assumed was a large animal. The chief of police during an investigation took me aside and told me not to talk about what I saw around town. He stated that he didn't want to cause panic in the small town, so he never reported his encounter or description of what happened at Greenwood. We weren't able to find any missing persons matching the description. We're also unable to find the location of where this other officer believed that he himself saw a werewolf. I did see one, though, claiming to be an unnamed officer who have also been on the search party for the missing boy, but they have since been let go. April 2008. At the time, I was an officer with the city of the Moore Police Department. It was around 11, and my partner and I were patrolling near the area around Northwest 19th Street, responding to several calls of screams and an abandoned meat packaging plant. This plant had closed down about 20 years earlier. We never found anything, but thought it could have just been teenagers trying to get in trouble. After we investigated all around the plant, not finding anything, we headed back, getting ready to close up the investigation. As we're walking back up, we noticed something large moving behind a chain link fence, pulling on our flashlights, pointing it toward where we saw movement. That's when we saw it. It jumped off one of the walls on top of the buildings, crouching down, looking at us. It did not look like any animal known here on Earth. It had dark grayish skin with large black eyes, small fangs sticking out of its mouth, and this white hair running down its jawline with muscular arms almost touching the ground. It looked like a cross between a bat and a human, and it quickly turned, jumping off the building onto another, running across it and disappearing over a large stack of old wooden planks. My partner looked at me like I was crazy when I told him what I saw. He said it couldn't be real and that I was pranking him. But when we got back in our cars ready to leave, we noticed there was also a small hole in the fencing where something had apparently tried to dig into the ground underneath. And as we drove out there, my partner just seemed to get lost somewhere between his thoughts and fear while looking to me for answers. We searched the perimeter and the surrounding area more, but finding nothing ultimately, continuing on with our shift. After we were off duty, we went to O'Malley's Bar and Grill, about an hour away, near Norman, Oklahoma, and we had a few drinks. Not sure if it was the liquor speaking, but as we talked more after a few beers, he admitted that he had saw the same thing to me just before I called him over to help. He tells me that it reminded him of this vampire entity that would visit him as a child every night and terrify him. He claims it would jump from his closet into his bedroom, growl at him, threaten to hurt him and his family. He then describes the same look we saw that night at the plant, the dark gray skin and fangs, but he still denies that this thing was real and that did it even exist. When we finished up our beers, we went back to Moore and started our normal routine. This is something that will always stick with me. May of 1985. We were dispatched to a rural area of Placer County, California, investigating some possible dog or livestock killings. The crime was that the owners found their dogs dead in the backyard, and one of their goats was taken from the pen and killed pulled apart, like a piece of chicken. What was strange about this is that any animal 
abducting goats or hens, would generally eat on them, not take their prey and pull them apart and leave the body. When we got there at first, we saw nothing, but when we began to walk around by our cars, we could hear something, something breathing pretty heavily, like it was running and getting closer. So we walked around some more, and could see what looked like a little person hiding behind two trees just about 50 yards out, looking at us. My partner actually recognized it at first, that it looked like a human face, or maybe a child, but with glowing eyes, crouching down and covered in hair. Then it crouched down to all fours and ran away into another tree. I was already shooting at it with my 9mm. It did not move like a human, but like that of an animal. That is when it came out of the tree and was on top of me. The rest of the incident is kind of blurry. However, I do know that nobody could find the bullet casings or even see what I had been firing my weapon. I then took them to where the creature was standing when it ran across the road. They still could find nothing. The people who worked on the case were stunned by what happened. One man said he would later go back there again if need be. He also claimed that he had been feeling something evil in the area for a while now. Take that as far as you want. Later on down the road, we also found some dead cattle in another part of the county. We were told by the owner that he had been having problems with some cattle mutilations and thought this something that I had shot at was also killing his livestock. I know it was not the same thing, because the killings were different. Another man who we spoke to had said that this goat that was killed had its stomach completely ripped open, and just like the others, left there to rot. My report and statement was only taken so far, with this creature having jumped on top of me. I'm surprised it did not kill me, but it did give me some pretty severe trauma that I have to live with. I can tell you that whatever this thing was, was not a normal human, or an animal. This was something else altogether, maybe an unknown species of some kind, something that science probably will deny. My partner and I first heard these stories from a coworker who overheard another officer talking about it. We thought and were convinced they were making the whole thing up. But one night, me and my partner decided to drive around the park to see if we can find anything weird for ourselves. We head down this lone dirt road, tall grass on either side, and suddenly three deer burst out in the dark to our right. Our headlights caught them moving just as they ran into the trees on the left. So naturally, we could tell they were being chased by something. We turned off the headlights and began moving very slowly, keeping an eye out for anything big. We drove slowly more and more down this winding road, until finally something came in view in front of us. It looked like a large hairy man crouched over, and as soon as it came out, you could just see its silhouette against the cold night sky. And since it was so dark, I couldn't see much, but the thing kind of turned around and began moving in our direction, and then moved away. As soon as my partner and I saw it, we got this really weird feeling, like something terrible was about to happen. So we quickly turned our headlights on, by that point, it was already gone. We pulled out of there, left pretty quickly. I don't even want to acknowledge what that could have been. I don't think I'm ready to accept that reality just yet. Lately, I've been seeing a lot more stories on Reddit about Yowie sightings and encounters. So, I myself was driving home one evening and saw something that disturbed me to my core. Myself and two fellow officers were driving down this country road towards the station. It was maybe right about one in the morning, after a very long shift. The roads can be pretty dangerous sometimes, and we're always on high alert for anything out of the ordinary. We spotted something up ahead, near an old abandoned building, so we slowed down to see what it was. It was the movement that caught our eye. As we got closer, I realized it was not any animal we'd ever seen. It was tall, bipedal, hairy, with big eyes, and had claws like a bear. But it clearly was not a bear. But like a bear, it also stood upright. 
It was just standing there looking right at us. It did not have any clothes on either, so I was pretty rattled. We pulled up about several hundred feet away, stopped to get a better look at it. We knew this wasn't one of the new aliens they're always talking about. This was something else. Though I will admit, we're all fairly seasoned officers. This thing really spooked us. Enough that one of my fellow officers turned around right then, and drove off without saying anything to me or my other friend. He must have had his reasons that he took off, while we were still in the process of trying to find out what happened. This thing began making strange sounds. We tried to get a closer look, but we felt too afraid to get closer. I feel like had we gotten out of the car and gone up the hill to where this was, whatever that thing was, it would have attacked us. Was it a yaoi? It just had this sort of dangerous demeanor about it, so we decided to leave it instead. I'm kind of glad my partner took off. I think he knew something I did not back then. I know for sure now, though. Cryptids are real, and Yowie is one of them for sure. In fact, my childhood friend saw another one years ago in the forest near his home. Once we were young teenagers, he has been trying to convince me ever since that all those other stories we've heard are probably true. I guess we know that he was right about at least some of them. I don't know what's going on, but I'm glad to see there are others out there like me and my friend who believe in these creatures and are not afraid to speak out about it. It's time we get the word out that they are real. People need to recognize this kind of thing is happening every day all around us. Even if most people can't see it or just simply refused to accept it. That and stop perpetuating the stories and rumors about Sasquatch and Bigfoot being demons or something. We know better than that by now, right? Hancock County, Mississippi. Law enforcement officials have received reports of a large bipedal creature in the vicinity of the Stennis Space Center. A young officer was one of the several to encounter this unknown animal that is believed to be Bigfoot. The police officer's submitted report reads as follows. A huge creature on two legs, running faster than any human have ever seen. I don't know what it was, but all I could think about was getting out of there without my gun drawn. The officer had completed his night shift at roughly 11.30 p.m., had gone home with his girlfriend who had picked him up for the drive home. After dropping her off, he began driving north on Highway 607 toward Bay St. Louis when he noticed headlights of another vehicle behind him. He slowed down, allowing the vehicle to pass him, but noticed that it did not. He then noticed that it had its high beams on and motioned for this unknown vehicle that was tailgating him to then to turn them off via finger gesture. I started slowing down, getting over to let this person pass me, thinking I could get a look at them or their license plate number when they pulled up to my driver's side door. The officer pulled his car over onto the shoulder of Highway 607 in order to get out of the way, only to find himself face to face with a very hideous man, or so he thought. What he was actually seeing in the shoulder of the road was a Bigfoot creature. The bipedal creature walked around his patrol car while he got out into a firing stance, unholstered his firearm. The unknown creature was obviously not threatened by the officer, as it then walked into the wooded area, right near Highway 607, disappearing from sight. While this officer is certain that what he encountered was a Bigfoot, he also reported an incident of having his patrol car go dead while inside the buffer zone of the Stennis Space Center at roughly 3.34 a.m., he will be filing a subsequent report to his original encounter report with this new information in it. I was off duty when this happened, but I was also in my uniform still and in a police car. I was driving to the gym and I get a call from dispatch saying there was an officer down at the local high school where a kid had been stabbed by another student. This made me drive faster since any school violence is extremely dangerous for anybody involved. Even though I'm off shift, I feel like it's my personal duty to attend. As I'm pulling into the parking lot, 
which is adjacent to the football field, I see a massive black figure running along the fence line, about 15 feet off the ground. I had to do a double take. It looked like two legs, but then there were four. It looked almost human, but too big. Its arms were outstretched, as if trying to climb or something, or just stretch out. It then leapt from one side of the fence to the other, effortlessly, which made no sense. It was easily 10 to 15 feet in the air. It then ran over to the top of the car, and I have no idea what or who this thing was, but it let out this strange guttural yell that made my skin crawl. I can write all of this up in my report when I get back, but I don't think they'll believe me. I figured I would submit this anyway because it's been too long and I still remember this thing vividly. As far as the time and place goes, we were down by the river at night, looking for an abandoned car with drugs inside of it. We didn't find any. So, we're just cruising back home. Top lights off because it's late. And suddenly, something darts out in front of our police cruiser from the right side. So I swerve left to avoid hitting whatever it is at 50 kilometers an hour, or whatever the speed limit was at the time. Next thing I know, I've got a face full of bloodied fur and all sorts of smells, like somebody's thrown up their KFC gravy all over. Same thing over my partner who's driving. When we get out to inspect whatever it is we've hit, we're both just like, what is that? It was an awful stench. We look around and don't see anything apart from the big patch of dirt and bloodied fur or whatever. Sorry I'm not good with visual details, and bits of gore all over the road. It wasn't until recently when I began doing research for this type of stuff. At home, I found out what it could have been. A young, juvenile Bigfoot. This was a strange humanoid-looking creature. This was all that was left of it. Don't laugh. This is the only explanation we can find. The smell that it left behind was horrendous. It was the most musty, stinky stank I've ever smelt. We decided not to tell anybody. We would have been the laughing stock of the entire county. We just stuck with our story and said we hit a large dog. Nothing more ever became of it. Besides, nobody would have believed us anyway. I was riding back from a three-day stint out in the desert with my squad. We were assigned to protect a convoy that was carrying vital supplies for our own troops. I don't know what it was exactly, but they told us if anything happened to those trucks, then the war would have been even more devastating than what it already is. I just work as an officer, not some military strategist. Anyhow, being out there in the open desert with nothing but you and your squad mate is pretty disconcerting, at least to me anyway. With all these strange sounds coming from everywhere, one can easily get scared, especially during night patrols when everything falls deathly silent. Except it was not. As I was leading the convoy through our last night patrol, for those three long days without any incident or trouble from anyone, we were just about to call off the guard duty and rest up for a little bit when it happened. It was me who spotted them first, as my squad mates slept as usual. I had to take watch. They weren't exactly hard to miss with all their lights and everything, but there were four of them. These big, bright metallic yellow orbs that kept following us everywhere, even if we tried to hide behind the hills and other obstacles. Their position was given away easily enough. I told my team members, but they didn't believe me at first, until they saw them too. They said these things must be scouts from an opposing military force. I was not so sure, and neither were they. We did not see any other military personnel that night. These things made their way to us slowly, but we remained calm. That is, until they began glowing brighter and more intensely. It then dawned on all of us what exactly these mysterious floating orbs were. The next thing we heard was a loud screeching sound coming from one of the things, and immediately after, another one started doing the same, while two others remained silent. This went on for minutes before they suddenly sped off towards our base, which sat miles away 
from where we currently are. We did not know if whatever gave them such bright light had caused damage to our camp, or worse, infiltrated it, and by the time we got there an hour later, everything seemed normal. We even questioned our commanders, and they confirmed that there was indeed a sort of strange light that came from the direction of where we were patrolling, but they did not know what it was. All I can remember is them telling us to forget about it, to get back to our homes for we were dismissed by the higher-ups. It only took me a moment to realize what exactly those lights were before my squad mates told me that they were pulled in by their superiors and they weren't lying. I was patrolling in my cruiser when I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. It looked like a man-sized lizard walking on two legs, crossing up ahead. It had shiny scales all over it, and it moved very quickly, like it was very comfortable walking on two legs without a problem. Its eyes were this fiery red color. It turned over to look at me, so I did a U-turn for it as soon as it disappeared, thinking this was just some freaking Halloween costume. And I drove around aimlessly, and checking every road and nook and cranny on the path before going off about where this thing had been seen. About an hour after that, just outside of Colchester County, our cruiser got attacked by what we think was the same lizard creature. Except now, it came from behind and shattered the back glass, nearly almost got in the cruiser, had it not been knocked off the car and shot at. After this happened, the weird things began happening to all the officers who experienced this. Bad nightmares, strange paranormal happenings at home. Then it became the entire police station. Everybody felt like they were under attack by some kind of demon or devil. There were only so many details to remember about these things. They kind of reminded me of gremlins or ghostbusters, except they were so gross and reptilian looking. The only one who seemed to understand at the time was our second to the chief, Officer Schaefer. He had had personal run-ins with these things before, individually and by himself while hunting. And then other strange paranormal happenings began happening all over the police station. Even worse, things got increasingly violent, and I began fearing for my life. Even now, I feel like whatever that thing was had attached evil spirits to me and my fellow colleagues. Do you have any idea at all? I know you're just a YouTube guy, but do you have any idea at all what this could be or if this means anything? I'm just an officer who's desperate, looking for help. My nickname is Detective Mark Smith. I'm a civil servant, working in the South Carolina State Park Service Police Department. Recently, while on patrol at Santee State Park, I encountered an individual who claims to be part of the Lizard Man Task Force. It was approximately midnight when dispatch had sent us to investigate reports of somebody screaming from inside the park. We immediately responded. As we neared the location that dispatch had gave us for where the screams were last heard, our vehicle had malfunctioned, losing all power along with most electrical equipment. This forced us to continue on foot, following what appeared to be abandoned tire tracks leading into a heavily wooded area. The tracks appeared to belong to a mid-sized 4x4, or SUV-type vehicle. We continued on foot as the screams came from what sounded like a young child, pleading for help from something unknown. As we neared the location, suddenly, those screams were gone, and the only thing we could now hear was the sound of growling coming from whatever was out there. I remember seeing a flash of yellow eyes staring at us before whatever was out there quickly turned and ran into the night. It took about an hour to find another officer who arrived with a tow truck and managed to pull our car back out onto the road. This way, we could contact dispatch and have it towed away for repair. By now, it's 2.18 a.m., so this is when we headed back to the station. I was pissed off, tired, and half-scared. As we made our way out of the park, dispatch had called us about reports of another officer down. 
whom I'll call Officer James. Apparently, the word was that he had been attacked by some large unknown animal, but they weren't sure if it was an animal or what. We didn't know what to make of any of it at the time, as we rushed over there to investigate more screams that were heard coming from a neighborhood close by. And there were several people who were having their own encounters with this creature. We all split up into two teams, realizing that whatever was out here seemed to be extremely aggressive and very dangerous. Once again, it took us nearly an hour just to find each other due to various malfunctions with our equipment. The officers were all fine, just a little shaken up and they described a creature that was about eight feet tall, glowing yellow eyes and looking like a giant walking lizard. They explained how it disappeared into the woods and we could not get close to it. But when we'd see it, and we would open fire on it, it would growl at us in sort of this demonic hell beast tone and continued to disappear. This is when we realized that whatever this was was in no way normal, and we really needed to reevaluate how we were going to approach this. We managed to find our officer, who had been attacked by this lizard, and showed us several massive footprints left behind near where it got ambushed. He was seriously injured, bleeding out badly and unable to move on his own for several hours until help had arrived. This is when we first heard about all these beings linked to the lizard man's sightings. These have been occurring all across the state over the years. After that night, I'm not sure how much more detail I can remember. But eventually, I ended up taking a friend of mine into Santee State Park, where he wanted me to show him something called the Ritual Site. He explained how there are ceremonial circles carved into certain trees and rocks, with symbolism related to the occult surrounding them. Once again, he claimed it had something to do with lizardmen, or that they have some sort of cult links. Anyway, it was hard for him trying to explain all what he had seen, but he believed that these things were coming in from demonic portals. Regardless, we made our way down into these woods to an area that looked like it might be where all the attacks were occurring near the ritual site. And suddenly, something jumped out in front of us. It was rather large, the same height as before, and the same glowing eyes. With its hands, it clawed at my friend and tried to drag him away, which somehow knocked me unconscious in the process. I woke up several hours later to realize what had happened. Immediately went looking for my friend. I was only unconscious for maybe two minutes. And after that, I had spent several hours trying to find him. I looked everywhere. I searched everywhere. Areas full of creeks, rivers, and swamps. It took me a good few days before I realized I could not find him anywhere. Until finally, I bumped into a park ranger, telling him exactly what had happened. He suggested that I seek out more police assistance at the Santee State Park Ranger Station. They were currently having reports of another encounter with this thing. When we finally got there, we were met by their sheriff, who explained that they had been having many sightings all around here before, that the Lizard Man is a very, very real thing. I consider myself a very analytical person, not easily swayed by something I see or feel. This is the reason why it took me so long to write this up. And if you read my earlier post, you would understand. This happened in October of 2017. It was right around 5 p.m. I was just doing my daily patrol through a farming community close to my station that was mostly abandoned after sunset due to trespassing, theft, and mischief. After making rounds checking empty buildings and barns with little to no activity, I headed back towards the main road, about 500 meters from where I started off at. As I got closer to the paved asphalt of the highway, there were farm fields on each side of me, as far as my eye could see. To my immediate right was a large pumpkin field that had mature pumpkins, and although the ones closer to me were ripe, I noticed some green ones on others further in the distance. I slowed down quite a bit when I saw this, so I could take a better look at them, just in case there might be someone trying to steal them. Although, it was getting dark. It wasn't quite sunset yet, and as I got closer, 
just within the 30 meters of these pumpkins, something caught my attention. It was similar to when you catch movement out of your peripheral, but when you look over there, nothing is there. So naturally, I've been in countless situations in which I've had to defend myself or apprehend someone. I immediately slowed down, put my cruiser in park, reached for my flashlight and grabbed the pepper spray on the passenger side. As I was reaching for these items, I noticed something very small crawling across this large rock next to the pumpkins. At first glance, it looked like a little misshapen little man. It didn't seem to have any gender or sex, nor did it appear to be an adolescent child due to its size. Before stopping, shifting into reverse and backing up, the creature apparently sensed me somehow and quickly scampered off behind the pumpkin towards a thicket of trees. The whole thing happened so fast that all I could do was put the car back into drive and proceed back to the station. When I got home, I decided to try and look online for what this might have been. Came across this subreddit. Now, months later after counseling through an officer assistance program, I feel comfortable being able to talk about it without feeling like I need somebody to watch over me 24-7. It had to have either been a gnome, a troll, or a goblin. As ridiculous as that sounds, me at even admitting that they're real. I had just gotten out of the police academy within six months when I had my very own sighting and still have yet to report it to my superiors. I was still in town on an early evening on my way to meet up with some friends. I was stopped at a red light. As the orange and yellow of the sun began to vanish behind the line of the trees on the horizon, I noticed out of my driver's side window this large creature coming up alongside me. It looked like it had just crawled down from these hills and seemed to be trying to cross or travel. As we both went through this intersection, it started watching me inside my car as I drove away and stayed next to me for at least a few miles before its size made it disappear into the darkening sky. The best way that I know how to describe it is it looked like a half gargoyle, half human, black leathery skin, a long tail with the shape of a whip, with a kind of spade shape at the end. It appeared to have horns and sharp claws, but still appeared very human in nature, wearing nothing more than what appeared to be a loincloth, or possibly just a flap of black skin that was revealed when it crouched down. As you can imagine, I drove home in complete shock and disbelief, but could do nothing to get the image out of my head. This thing flew about 30 to 50 feet above ground the entire time, completely visible to anybody in eye shot. What made things worse was that there was not another person around anywhere for miles, which meant I could not get an explanation from anybody. This thing seemed to have been watching me, as if it knew what I was thinking, where I was going. Since this encounter, many strange events have occurred keeping me away from the location where I saw it years ago, including hearing things outside my window seeing very bizarre things out in the woods. I try to pick up on the trail again, after moving, but after a couple of days, things started appearing inside my house, as well as knocking on my doors and windows. It's almost frightened me away completely. It was the only thing that I knew that these were truly evil and needed to be stopped. I feel like they've crossed over into our dimension. They're even more monstrous than before. When I first got onto Reddit, I was hesitant about telling people what happened to me at night, but I ended up deciding that this would be the best place because I could be anonymous and fully express what I experienced. This is not a joke or fake, nor am I looking for any kind of attention, notoriety, or fame. I don't want any upvotes, none of that. I truly hope that by writing this, someone somewhere will be able to help me, and I really need it. Thank you for your time, and thank you if you were able to read all of this. Oh, and one last thing I wanted to include. I don't think this has anything to do with demons or devils. I've seen a lot of people say this online. Although it feels very similar, it is not what appears to be in any religious text to my knowledge, and certainly nothing that you would want to meet up close and personal. I 
I hope that by posting this, maybe another fellow officer will read this and open up about some of the more sensitive things in their own life. I was partnered with a fellow officer who would always tell me these stories about how he was seeing this thing all over the place. He said he saw it by the 7-Eleven, and then again by an abandoned house that used to be a meth house. Finally, this thing had apparently followed him outside of town into the swamps and forest. I never once thought he was making any of it up, because, you know, he's my partner. That's not his style. He's very serious. But I began to notice things along with him as well. At first, it wasn't anything major but just odd little things that you'd see for a split second, usually when you were driving through unpopulated rural areas at nighttime. Other officers had told me that they too had been seeing something strange around their patrol zones, but were hesitant on speaking up. One night, my partner said that he was going to follow whatever it was into the forest. I was already nervous about the area of Florida because people have talked about seeing some really weird things there in the years. I tried talking him out of it, but he insisted on going anyway, so I went with him. A few blocks away from the edge of the forest, I told him to stop and park by a remote two-story house on a street corner. He parked right next to it, cut his engine off. We sat there in silence for roughly three to five minutes, when we hear this blood-curdling roar coming from nearby in the marshes. And my partner looks behind us and screams, oh no, and then turns the engine back on and peels out of there like a bat out of hell. I never did find out what he saw behind us. I didn't find out until after he'd retired that he'd seen what was making those roars, and he claims it wasn't human. I hope the department never puts him in a position to have to shoot one. I could only assume they're big, tough and mean. But again, if they were anything like this one he saw, who knows how much good a gun would do, if this is maybe something like a skunk ape. I'm also willing to bet that all the strange creatures out there are smart enough to not attack him after what he must have done. That's all for now, folks, but if you want to discuss this in private, go ahead and send me a PM. I'd be more than happy and willing to discuss this. I remember this being back in 2012. I was on patrol along the Mississippi River, just outside of St. Louis. The area that I was patrolling is considered one of the most haunted areas in all the United States. We get a lot of reports from people who see things like ghosts and whatnot. So, at about 4 a.m., dispatch received a call from a frantic lady who was talking about seeing a man with glowing red eyes and huge fangs coming out of the woods towards her house. Now, this woman specifically was known to be on medications that caused paranoia and schizophrenia, so we initially thought it might have been some kind of hallucination brought on by her medication, but she sounded panicked, telling us there might actually be something going on, and so we had to check it out. We arrive at the area she called from. It's a lone gravel road leading to an old farmhouse, and as we got closer, I began getting this odd feeling, like something bad was about to happen. When we get up to the house, you could see something or somebody appearing to be huddled behind an old tree stump near some bushes. But since it was dark, you couldn't make out who or what it was until we got close. As we got close enough, I could finally see who or rather what it was. At first, all I saw were two green eyes staring back at me with an expression that seemed like terror. I couldn't exactly tell what it was, other than it wasn't human, but looked like some sort of ape or monkey. That's when it stood up, and it was easily nine feet tall, looking like this thing could have attacked somebody and destroyed us. Its long brown hair kind of flung off its body, and it had pointed ears on top of its head. But what really caught me off guard, initially, besides its face hiding behind the stump, was its long snout and large fangs. I thought this might have been some sort of rabid bear or something, but I have never been filled with so much terror before in my life. This thing jumps up in the tree instantly and then leaps back toward us, in a pouncing motion swiping one of its claws. 
a second one of these creatures steps out of the woods, right by where the first one attacked, and begins to run towards us. My partner and I fire a couple shots at these things, running back to our vehicle, as these things gave chase while darting off back into the swamps. We had to go get back up, and we realized that this situation wasn't safe. This was not the last time that we encountered what we like to call the Wolves of the Everglades. In fact, there's a much longer version, which I'll probably share with you in a separate email. But for now, I don't think these creatures are innocent. I believe that this woman was not just on her medication. These things were truly trying to break into her house, and who knows what they would have done to her had they got in.